Huh, sweetheart? Sleep well? Next question. You're looking good. Fresh as morning dew. And? Headache? Morning, Bernie. Careful what you say. Madame is indisposed. There have been some calls for you, all commiserations, I think. Listen, guys, don't get on my nerves, okay? Is there any tea left? Up there. It's probably gone cold. Cold as ice. There's nothing better than a nice hot cup of tea, is there? Shut up, Mike. I'm already gone. Our answering machine. The projection screen. The guys are really sweet. You have two new messages. Catherine? This is Dad. I, uh, I got your number from your friend Tom. He didn't want to give it to me at first, but I told him it was important. And it is, isn't it? I've only got one daughter, and you've only got one dad. Well, I would rather have spoken to you in person, but... Oh, well, this'll have to do. Happy birthday. I wish you all the best. I have no idea what kind of life you live now. But I bet you're making it. You've got so much energy. You always did. Like your mother. I'm sure you're doing well. Whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. Well, uh... Oh, by the way, Spot died last year. Cancer. I had to let him put him to sleep. He didn't feel the thing. And hey, uh, the tree that we planted behind the house, remember? It's eight meters tall now. Eight meters. Sometimes I look at it and I think about how old you were back then and wonder if we if we'll ever look at it together, you know? How big it'll be then. God, I hate these machines. Can't you pick this up? Okay, I guess you're out. Well, take care, my girl. Have a good time. I'll try again soon. Happy birthday. my magnifying glass. Hey, I thought he would have thrown the cards away. He'll never do it. A memento of his father. He was a Belgian miner. From Michelle's mother, I think. I don't know why he still keeps the thing. He just can't chuck it out.
He's hung up his math diploma. He must be having a midlife crisis. Hmm. Wine. Bernie's really getting old. Hey, Bernard. Hi. I'm sorry about before. I wasn't completely awake. I think you're really sweet when you've got a hand. I read the paper. You guys are really completely crazy. I know. You could have been cool. It's your birthday. We didn't want to get you a blender. How did you get Mike to climb up there? Mm, I told him it would increase his chances with you. You didn't say that. I did. You didn't? Oh, he's been secretly training for ten days. Haven't you noticed how thin he's got? Oh, God. You two really are crazy. And what's he doing now, so secretly? Preparing the big surprise. Top secret. Uh-huh. And is it a nice surprise? Or another one that could get you arrested? Both. Ah, that sounds great. Now tell me what it is. Wait until Mike's here. He he'll be finished soon. Go to your room and... <sighs> All right then. See you later. Now I can barely wait. Catherine! Oh, at last. I really ought to train more. I'll start tomorrow. A simple compass. A torch. The picture shows my mother just before her accident. hardly get time to read anymore. I hardly get time to read anymore. That's a long time ago. Well... So, my dear Catherine, Mike and I have spared no cost or effort in getting our next project off the ground. A really big one. And it's a home game, here, in London. The client is some crazy African. We're meeting his middleman at the London Eye. In 20 minutes. In 20 minutes? Oh, great. What will he pay? Double. At least. He hasn't named any figures as yet, but I think he's dripping with cash. We were thinking of giving it to Homes Not Bombs UK. What do you think? 
Which painting is it then? We'll find out soon. Mike has built a little toy. It's upstairs on my desk. I've only just finished it. Bring it down. A toy, right. Don't worry, it's nothing out of the ordinary. It looks like a remote control. Hmm, you're really building up the excitement. All right then. And? What now? We've got to go soon. All right, see you soon. A pair of rubber gloves. That's a cool thing. Hmm. That looks like a small gaming console. Well, that has to be the thing he meant. Not bad. Mike is and remains a child at heart, but a sweet one. Yuck. What's that then? It's already going moldy. I can't be doing with that stuff. The real world is more exciting. I know that game. You're talking about this thing here? Thing? That's not a thing. That's a masterpiece of illegal remote control electronics. Aha. Uh -huh. And what can it do? It can control the Ferris wheel remotely. Mike hacked into the wireless network. We can stop or turn the wheel at the touch of a button. Our very own conference room above the clouds. Extremely clandestine and unbelievably cool. Only a genius could construct a transmitter like this. And this thing works, right? Well, I haven't tried it out yet, but I've calculated everything. It must work. We'll soon see. So we're gonna meet this African guy in the London Eye? Not we. You. Mike will control the wheel from the ground. Kids, this is gonna be the deal of our lives with an unobstructed view. And? What do you say? You're crazy. I knew you'd like it. Come on, let's go. We're late. Pack your things. I've got to quickly do something on the computer. Did you read this? Henston, the foreign secretary, is dead. Collapsed at his desk. I've been sadder. Come on, Mike. You can't talk about him like that. He had a family. Three children. The people in the countries whose exploitation he was responsible for also had children. He wasn't undeserving. Don't be so cynical. That's not going to make the world any better. But it also won't make it worse. They'll put a new minister in his office. Long live the Commonwealth. Mike, we always said that we wouldn't become like these people. If you don't care whether there are deaths or not... Then I'd be like Henston, certainly. And that's why I say it's not a shame that he's dead. Where does your sudden love for this guy come from? Just because I don't wish death upon him doesn't mean... Can you discuss this in the car? You've got to go. Catherine would rather go to Minister Henston's funeral to plant some flowers. That's enough, Mike. 
Okay, okay. Not on my birthday. All right, let's go. One new message. Hi, Catherine. This is Tom. Happy birthday. So, have you been out celebrating? I bet you have, and now you're so hungover that you can't even come to the phone. Come on. I can even tell that over the phone. You could get in touch with me sometime, you know. Jacqueline is pregnant and we're getting married soon. I'd like to go on one last bender with you, Jeff and Nancy, before all that happens. Yeah. Once the little rug rat arrives, I won't have time again for at least ten years. And York really isn't that far away. Think about it. Oh, yeah, there was something else. Your father was here, here at our front door. He, he wanted your phone number. He'd already gone through half the school address book trying to find it. Yeah, and uh, I gave it to him. Hope you're not angry. You know, he looked really desperate. Perhaps you should give him another chance, Catherine. He's involved in some pretty nasty business, I agree, but he's your father and he loves you. Anyway, just don't be angry, okay? Give me a call back when you've got time. Hey, Tom. This is Catherine. Catherine? Hey! Great that you called back. My God, it's ages since I've heard your voice. You sound really different. Much more, uh, grown up. You mean older, right? You're the same old charmer. Rubbish. I didn't mean it like that. Just a lot of time has passed. So, tell me, what are you up to these days? Have you finally finished uni? Yeah, I have, actually. I did it. It just took me 17 semesters. Not bad, huh? Wow, 17 semesters. I'm so proud of you. You've been jobbing around, I guess. Um, yeah, you could say that. I've had a lot to do. Uh-huh. Let me guess, the same old fight for the impoverished and the dispossessed? You got it. Old Catherine is still chasing her little girl dreams. So, what do you work as these days? Oh, yeah, well, uh, this and that, you know. Hmm, that sounds a lot like import-export, Katie. Mm, which isn't so far off. Is it a secret, or what? You aren't doing anything stupid, are you? No, you know that. I'm doing the right thing. What? It's all right, Tom. I make enough money. I don't know, Catherine. Every time you get this secretive, something isn't quite right. It's always been like that. Now don't start going on about the £120 notes again. That was forgery, Catherine. It was a joke. £120 notes, Tom, with a picture of a caveman on it. You could have been caught. Then you would have seen what a great joke it was. Oh, Tom. You're just the same as ever. You too, apart from your voice. Oh, come on. Let's not fight. You started it. Do you always have to have the last word? You see, we've still got it. I like fighting with you best of all. Once learnt, never forgotten. About my father. Oh, yes. You're not angry, are you? He sounded so desperate, I just couldn't refuse him. Have you spoken to him yet? No. And? Are you gonna call him? No, I don't think so. Catherine, that was all years ago. He's a pig, you know that. He's a businessman, Catherine. Sure, but one without any conscience at all. He supplies the biggest villains with anything they want. Well, if he doesn't do it, then someone else will. I know what you think about it, Tom. He's my father. You don't need to excuse him. I'm just saying that perhaps you should give him a call. He's not getting any younger, you know. <laughs> well, we're all not getting any younger, and some of us don't even get particularly old. Because there are people like my father. Now we're arguing again. Yeah, but we won't ever get over this, Tom. We're too different. Yeah, we are. But I like you anyway. I like you too, even though you're a bugger. There you go. You've said something nice at last. By the way, have you got your own family yet? I'm working on one right now. Yeah, I heard. Congratulations. To Jacqueline as well. I knew there was something going on between you two. Yeah, you were right. I'm really happy. She's great. And, and you? Have you got someone? Oh yeah. 
too, actually. You dirty thing. A how is it? Don't you get into trouble? Rubbish. I'm living with two guys, but just in a flat share. Aha. Uh -huh. What kind of guys, then? I hope they treat you right. The question is, do I treat them right? No, seriously. They're both really sweet. Mike is the definition of a computer geek. I evacuated him from his mother's house. He would still have been sitting in his nursery at 30. Oh dear, he's even more of a geek than me. And the other one? Bernard? Oh, he's a very special case. He's from Belgium and is already over 40. Aha, uh -huh, so he's a loser. Hey, don't diss my friends, okay? Bernard's a great guy. He's a mathematician and works for an insurance company. Hey, wow, an insurance broker? Then he must be a real outlaw. How the hell did you meet him? He's an art theft specialist. I was involved with them when I was writing my thesis. Ooh, that sounds dreadful. What was it about? Insurance between Rococo and the postmodern? Exactly. How did you know that? It was an essay on counterfeit art, Tom. Han van Mieteren, heard of him? Hmm, sounds like a pirate. Not far off. He was an exceptionally gifted counterfeiter, palmed Goering off with a fake Vermeer. Oops, that was cheeky. You don't say. Counterfeit art is part of Bernard's specialist field. That's how we met. And then you just moved in together. Oh, come on. You can't fool me. There's something going on between you two. Jealous, Tom? And how, damn you. You always preferred older men. <laughs> now stop that. There's nothing doing with these two guys. We're like brothers and sisters. All right, fine. Then you must be seeing that old geezer, the one you were always going on about. That McCain, or what was he called? Professor McBride? You can't leave that alone, can you? He was my examiner, Tom. And a friend. And he still is. Hmm. Examiner and friend. So that's what you call it these days. <laughs> you idiot. Listen, I've got to go. Jacqueline and me are going to our prenatal class soon. Wow. Then enjoy the stretching. Send my love to Jacqueline. Tell her I'm jealous. Liar. I'll tell her. We'll phone again, right? We'll do that. Take care, Tom. Take care. Hey, Bernard. Hi. See you later. Hey, Mike. So, everything ready? That's what I was going to ask you. Quickly do something on the computer, huh? Have you seen the paper? Certainly have. Well, it's a good shot of me, isn't it? Damn, I look so athletic in that picture, like Spider-Man. If Spider-Man did an office job. Come on, that's not nice. I've lost four kilos. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made it even halfway up the tower. Tell me I was good. You were great. But a kitchen blender would also have been all right. I don't want to celebrate my next birthday in jail. Have you got your phone? Sure. Your keys? Yes, Mum. And you? Have you got your phone? Of course. Okay, I'll be down in a minute. Hurry up. I'll wait downstairs. Come on, come on, come on, Catherine. We're in a hurry. Mike's van.
Okay. And now? We wait. The guy's called Odila. He'll be here any minute now. You get into the pod, I'll stop it, you do the deal, and then I'll bring you back down. How did you come in contact with this guy? Well, that's a funny story. He heard about our South Africa deal, and then he got in touch with Bernard. He got in touch with us? Where did he get the number? No idea. Bernard said he had a message on his mailbox. That's how it came about. And you're certain this isn't a trap? Almost certain. Oh, great. Come on, let's go back. Nonsense, Keith. Can't. I've checked him out. He's got at least five diplomatic passports, all of them fake. He's no cop. And I'm supposed to hang around with him in that pod on my own? I'll be there too. There. There he is. That one there? Yeah. The guy in the white suit. I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. Go on. You'll be okay. Oh, all right. Have you got your mobile on? Of course. Mr. Odila? Yes. Glad you could make it. Let's get started. I'm getting in now. What a wonderful view. Just look at all these people. Every one of them has a dream, and every one of them is working towards it. As busy as termites, right? Millions of souls building proud, ornate towers. Do you like termites, Mrs... Catherine. Mrs. Catherine. In my country, termites are seen as the incarnation of the dead. The holes in their towers lead to the spirit world. Isn't that strange? No matter how high the towers grow, they still lead to the underworld. And no matter how high this big wheel turns, its foundations remain the dust of the earth. The mud, the dirt. Whoa, the guys are leaning. Shall I bring you down? You, you wanted to make us a business proposal. Business? That's an ugly word. You can help us. You can free a soul. I don't fully understand. Catherine, shall I get you down now? I represent a big man. He's prepared to pay five million pounds for the portrait of Winston Churchill that's hanging in the London modern. Not just one lunatic, but two. That's a lot of money for a painting. It is fitting for this painting. My client doesn't calculate according to the market price. He'll know what he's doing. Not. You don't need to worry about that. The picture is of great worth to him, and it should be for you too. Two million in advance, the rest on delivery. Is that acceptable? Don't say the wrong thing now. Is the money in the suitcase? It's yours. We need about a week. If we fail, you get the money back, minus our expenses. You won't fail. We'll do what we can. That's enough now. All right, then. See you next week. I'm counting on you. Don't forget that. I'll keep it in mind. Phew. Good grief. What a charming fella. Let's get out of here. Okay. I don't see what it's supposed to represent. 
I'm not hungry. Wow. Nice. Meeting in ten minutes, okay? Okay. The rascals are everywhere. Just a minute. There we go. Bernie? Bernie! Isn't there? Where the hell is he then? There. Here he comes. There you are. Were you in town? Yeah, just quick bank business. Well, then you could have come with us. We could have used you. Your mystery guest was a bit of a creepy fella. Wasn't much fun being all alone with him in that pod. So, what did he say? What's the job? There is a job, isn't there? London Modern. A portrait of Churchill. Two million as down payment. Two million pounds? He'll give us that much for that painting? <laughs> he must be crazy. That he is. He wants it this week. Can we manage that? That depends completely on how long McBride needs for the copy. The old man isn't doing so well just now. Why? What's happened? When did you see him last? Oh, uh, yeah, well... I was at his place last week. He seemed somehow... unhinged. Oh, dear. Then I'll go and see how he is later on. All right, then. I better get to work on the computer. Hey, Mike. And what about the picture? Can you sort that out straight away? Sure. Just a second. Have a look for the USB stick, please. USB stick. Okay. Just a moment. See you later. Mike's USB stick. 20 gigabytes. He always has to go over the top. Hey, Mike. Here it is. Ah, uh, great. Wait a minute, yeah? Voila.
Okay, I've got it. Wow, that was quick. Great. A mere trifle? I'll go to McBride's place now. You look for the plans of the building in the meantime. And see if you can find out any more about this Adela guy. Oh, by the way, the rubbish needs taking out as well. And we're out of toilet paper. Great. Anything else? What about Bernard? Is he gonna do anything? Why don't you ask him? Bernard! The rubbish needs taking out! See you later, guys. Maybe Mike needs the van. I'll go to Robert on foot. Tourist rubbish. And not at all cheap. Robert, it's me. Robert, it's me. God, you look terrible. Are you unwell? Ah, oh, Catherine. Uh, it's nice that you came over. What's wrong with you? You're really pale, and you've lost weight. Yeah, well, uh, an old chap like me can afford to lose a few stone, eh? Have you been ill? You should have told me. I could have cooked for you. No, no, I I'm fine. I I'm just not sleeping very well. You worry too much. You didn't call on my birthday, either. Oh, no. What day is it today? Wednesday, the 1st of July. My birthday. Oh, dear, dear. I'm getting old. Come here. All the best for the smartest, best, most talented girl in the world. Or at least in town. Or at least in this studio. I haven't got anything for you. Yeah, you have. We've got a job. You've got a week to do the copy. Can you manage it? A week? I hope it's at least something a bit challenging. I wouldn't get too excited. I've got it with me. Wait. This projector still work? If it doesn't, uh, give it a bang. I don't know why. Because that always helps? Oh dear. They're all long overdue. Robert's projector. He uses it to project the original for the preliminary drawing. What a mess. Everything's falling apart. He really isn't doing too good. Robert? You really aren't looking good. Come on, tell me. What's wrong? Hmm, what's wrong? I told you. I'm not sleeping well. Are you depressed? Alone? Lonely? No. Or the opposite. Listen, Catherine. I I'm going to tell you something, but you mustn't make fun of me, you hear? I promise. There's someone here. What? What do you mean? Who is it? Not now. Not when I'm here. There's someone here. In my studio. I can see it in little details. I'm not alone here. Come on. That's nonsense. Who'd break into your studio? Is anything missing? No. Nothing. But I can feel it. Someone comes in when I'm not here. When I come back, a cloth is lying a, a millimeter to the left, or a book is open at another page, or a canvas is leaning at a, a slightly different angle against the wall. No, rubbish. You're imagining it. You see? You're making fun of me. You, you think I'm mad, right? That... no. No, not at all. It's terrible if you're scared. I only... I only wanted to reassure you. 
You're probably mistaken. That's what I wanted to say. Shall we get you anything? Do you need paints or canvas? I've still got the key for the faculty. Uh, I'll have a look in the storeroom later. Hmm, we'd better buy that stuff. They'll realize if something goes missing. The new chancellor has got every single pencil itemized. Uh, not in the storeroom. I spoke to Dawson and Trevor. They don't touch the storeroom. They say that the old stuff from before 2005 is worthless. It doesn't even exist according to the new inventory. They'll be throwing it all out. Throwing it away? Everything? The paintings from past students? You're not serious. Shall I have a look to see if there are still some of your works in there? The picture of my father. Perhaps that's still lying around. <laughs> you want that back? He called today. Gosh. And, uh, what did he say? I didn't pick up. He said... He said all the best for your birthday. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's more than I said. Are you going to call back? I don't know. Where's the painting of Jessica? It was always back there in the corner. I... burned it. You did what? I couldn't stand her looking at me anymore. Her eyes changed over the years. She looked at me like a stranger. But it was just a picture. Exactly. That's why I burned it. I don't need that stare. I want to keep Jessica in my memories. Just like I knew her. Robert, that painting looked like it always did. You should know better, Catherine. Perception is in the eye of the beholder. Jessica didn't change. I changed. That's what I saw in her eyes. And that's what I didn't want to see anymore. The painting didn't become alien to me. I became alien to the painting. I'm worried about you. Won't you come round for dinner tonight? Ah, oh, don't worry. I got some soup from yesterday. You can't live on that. But you can't die from it either. I'll be fine. So this is it. Good old Churchill. Can you do that in a week? Who the hell wants this amateur crap? Some insane collector. I was a bit surprised myself. He sent along a rather mysterious middleman. I could paint that blindfolded. Any old street painter can do this inane portrait realism. But not to such a standard that it's good enough for a museum. Only you can do that. The original is just as out of place in a museum as the copy would be. It's inferior. Now, don't tell me he's going to pay for this. You could say that. He'll give us five million. Five million pounds for this? <laughs> What's happened to the art market? It certainly hasn't become more rational. All the better for us. I've got to go. You really won't come over for some dinner. I'd rather do some work. Okay. Then take care, all right? Look after yourself. I'll be in touch. Hey, so what did McBride say? Is he gonna do it? Yes, but he isn't well. I told you, he's slowly reaching that age. You should know. He burned the painting of Jessica. Seriously? He says he's changed. He can't stand seeing the picture anymore. He also thinks he's being followed. He said that when he's not there, people go snooping around in his studio. Ah, uh, heck. 
So he really has changed. He's gone all paranoid then. Or could there be some truth in it? Has he got any evidence? He said he knows that it's true. He can see it in certain details. Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound good at all. If he's right, we've got a serious problem. We've got a problem, Mike, because he's unwell. He's our friend. We've got to help him. Okay, okay, but how? I've never been particularly pally with him. You're his favorite. Tell us what we can do for the old boy and we'll do it. I'll do it. That's nice of you. Take the rubbish out with you, okay? Weren't you gonna do that? Hey, I had things to do. The London Museum plan. Forgotten already? And? Have you got it? Ha! What do you think? Of course. Not! But I know where we can get it. The building was designed by the architects Wilbur and Thompson. I've already been on their server. But? Yeah, well, this server has some teeny-weeny security features. Nothing serious, but it's gonna take me the whole day to crack it. Okay, then we'll go to the museum tomorrow and have a look around. Okay, off we go. Jack Stern, haven't got time now. Goodbye. Stop. Oh, Chief. <laughs> hey, Chief, how's it going? Sorry, I, 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 I didn't see it was you. Oh, what can I do for you? Jack, how long have you been working for us? Oh, come on, Chief. I'm sorry. My phone's ringing all day. I just wanted to, uh... How long? Eleven years. And do you want to continue working for us? Yes, Chief. Then don't hang up again before I tell you to. No, Chief. Good. I'll be sending you a file soon. Death of a member of the British government. The security threat level's been increased. You'll be checking whether this thing has any relevance to our security. You read the files, travel to London, have a look at this thing, and then write a report immediately. Questions? No, Chief. Then fine. Now, you may hang up. Thanks, Chief. Knucklehead. I've been hoping for years that this place would burn down. My apartment. I've been hoping for years that this place would burn down. And I just love headaches. Huh. <laughs> I said that they ought to put cacti in the offices. my badge. I've given up giving it up. I urgently ought to sort my mail out. The automat in the hall spits this stuff out, and then I drink it. Susan's father gave it to me as a wedding present, and then after the divorce, he wanted it back, the old tight ass. I've given up giving it up. Frazier's old computer? Oh, the chief loves me. Okay, then I'll give the ladies and gentlemen a call.
MI5, Special Agent Jordan Bellico. Jack Stern, International Police, Washington. Hi, Jordan. So, how's the weather over there? It's raining. Do you know how late it is here, Mr. Stern? Yeah, of course. I'm not disturbing you, am I? I assume you're calling about the Henston case. Your boss gave me advance warning. Exactly. I know. It's a real whodunit. We'd like to get an idea of this thing at first hand. Our whole department has been working non-stop for the past 48 hours. I'm on my way home. I've just come from the pathologist. Okay. I'll keep it short. I plan to fly out today. I'd be there tomorrow morning. Does that suit you? Not particularly, but it can be organized. And can you arrange a set of wheels for me? What do you have in mind? A van would be good. One of those surveillance vans. Hmm, that's doable. Any particular features or fittings? If you had a sleeping bag? Sure. And perhaps a steering wheel on the right side? <laughs> the steering wheel is on the right side. British sense of humor, huh? Very good. Uh, so I'm flying to London Central, and then I'll come out to you. No one will be able to pick you up. We'll park your van in the airport car park and leave the key for you at the check-in. I'll send you an email with the password soon. You have my mobile number, just in case. Wonderful. Then good night. See you tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. There you are. We've got it. Good. United Airways booking office. Jack Stern, International Police, Washington. I have a business account with you. Yes, Mr. Stern. I found you. What can I do for you? I need a seat on the next plane to London. That will be the direct flight at 2.30 p.m., sir. Business class? Definitely. And give me a seat next to the aisle. And a parachute. Aisle seat, sir. I've made a note of that. That will be $2,500. Where should I send your e-ticket? Send it to my email address. The ticket's on its way. Please be at the check-in in Terminal 2 no later than 2 p.m. United Airways wishes you a pleasant flight. Thanks. Okay, I've printed the ticket out. Good, so I'll pack up now and get out of here.
There's the ticket. All right, then. Hello. My name's Jack Stern. You have a message for me? Your passport, please, sir. Sure. Thank you very much. The password for receiving the message, please. Password? Oh, yes. Uh, one moment. The password is 53 Alpha 2 Lima Whiskey 5. Thank you, sir. This key was left for you. Well, then. Have a nice day, sir. get the autopsy report off my mind. Puzzling. So the doctors don't have a clue either. Who would have had a motive? He must have had enemies for sure. I'm gonna ask Bellico. That must be it. Not bad. Okay. Attractive. And so roomy. Right. Welcome home. Okay, fine. The computer's there too. Is that him? It has to be him. Hi, you must be Jordan, right? Jack Stern, it's a pleasure. Did you have a pleasant flight? Yeah, well, I don't really like flying, you know. But after five beers, it was all right. Everything all right with the car? Yeah, everything's fine, thanks. I've made myself at home in there. The thing with the steering wheel's a bit of a pain, but I'll manage. I'd have thought driving on the left would be a lot easier after five beers. Oh, yeah. Damn, you caught me. Where do I hand in my driving license? To me, for example. Hey, Jordan, come on now. I'm completely sober. You wouldn't make things difficult for a fellow policeman now, would you? Like I said, Jack, your boss warned me about you. What did the old grouch come up with this time? Oh, he thinks a lot of you. But he also said that you're not so hot on following the rules. Nonsense. I love rules. All the better. Because you're in Great Britain now, Jack. You'll respect the law here. All the laws, including the ones that concern driving under the influence. Is that clear? Crystal clear. Okay. Now tell me, what happened to the poor guy? We don't know any more than what's in the report. Perhaps the post-mortem can tell us something, but the pathologist wasn't particularly optimistic. Evidence secured? And checked. All negative thus far. It would appear that he really did just fall down dead. Organ failure. Did he take drugs? Well, cocaine, uppers, sleeping pills. And he was an alcoholic, but no critical blood values. He went to the doctor regularly. The results were all in order. Wow. Almost sounds as though the man was more afraid of flying than me, huh? Indeed but his consumption patterns are unfortunately not uncommon for a top-ranking politician. I suppose I don't really need to ask if he had enemies. It would be quicker to list his friends. You followed the coverage of the demonstrations over the G8 summit? Sure. 
then you've seen a few hundred thousand of his enemies. Our first thought was political murder, but we can't find a thing. No weapon, no injuries, no bacteria, no poison. Did he have family? Wife, ex-wife, three children, golden retriever, and a girlfriend, of course, his blonde assistant. She's going to inherit everything, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. And how old is she? Twenty-two. Can't count to five, but looks like Miss Universe. We must be doing something wrong, Jordan. At least we're still alive. I'd like to have a look around in there now. Of course. I've already informed the officers. You have access to the office at any time. Your colleagues from France have also been here, by the way. Took off again yesterday. Are you coming in with me? Sorry, I've got too much to do. We're putting a special commission together. You've got my mobile number. So if you find anything... You'll be the first to know. That's right. So, speak to you soon. Okay, off we go. Regular wife of Dracula. You gotta be one of Henson's predecessors. Well, it's a piece of something. One hell of a boat. Yep, not much gets left behind. Not even of the high and mighty. Look at this, Henston's organizer. I call it shortening the chain of command. Now, would anyone notice if I just took a sip? Nice, but not my taste. Hmm, I know this old guy from somewhere. Colonial politician, I think. files. Minister Henston's organizer. Gotta do a bit of research on these entries. Let's see. Shortly before his death, Mr. Henston went out for a meal with a certain Nancy Jenkins. And then on the following day, again, with a Laureen Myers. And then he had a meeting with a company called Art Trans in his office. Could be it. A model then, huh? Alibi service? The good minister was very organized. Specialist art shipper. Hmm. Strange. Nancy Jenkins. Hello, Mrs. Jenkins. This is Jack Stern from the International Police. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you have a moment for me? International who? International Police. I'm investigating the death of the minister James Henston. I assume you've heard about that. Well, I never. So he's dead, is he? 
You don't know anything about it. Listen, Mr. International Thingamajig. My name is Stern. James Henston was a purebred sod and didn't deserve any better. I hope it was a slow and painful death. Oh, we're still working that out. Did you have to cut him up into little pieces for that? Oh, well, I think something like that will be done. Good. Very good. If you need any help with that... You didn't like Mr. Henston very much? Why'd you go to dinner with him then? Because he paid for it. It's my job. Escort service, you see. Why do you have such a bad opinion of him? He was a pig. Don't you want to ask me if I killed him? No, I don't think so. I... I'm sorry if I put you in an awkward position. <laughs> Not at all. It was a pleasure. Uh, yeah. Good. So then, uh, thank you very much for now. Myers? Hi, Mrs. Myers. This is Jack Stern from the International Police. International Police? Well, I never. So word of mouth does work. What do you mean? Wait a minute. What's this about, please? I have a few questions about the death of James Henston. Oh, I, I see, yes. That was a terrible thing. I was out for a meal with him just the day before he died. That's exactly why I'm calling. What was the purpose of your date? Business. Contract extension. Mr. Henson was a customer of your service? For many years. He had a bit of a difficult marriage. I can imagine. So you supplied him with the fitting alibis for his marital difficulties. Exactly. Have you got a problem with that? Not at all. Did Mr. Henson have any other difficulties, apart from his marriage? <laughs> well, with a job like his, you always have a lot of difficulties. He traveled a lot, and not all of his destinations were meant to be public knowledge. Did you always know where he was going when he needed an alibi? No. We don't ask our customers questions. We give them answers. Where were you when Mr. Henson died? You're asking for my alibi? I'm quite sure you have one. I've got 20. One's enough for me. I was working out a contract with a high-ranking American policeman. International police. Would you like to know his name? Perhaps I better not. I thought not. Good. Well, thanks a lot for now. Nothing at all, Mr. Stern. And, uh, if you ever need an alibi... I know. Have a nice day. Oh, Trans Limited. Jeff Travis speaking. Hi, Mr. Travis. Jack Stern here from the International Police. I have a question about one of your customers, James Henston. Oh, yes. The minister. He just died, didn't he? That's right. There's a note in his diary suggesting he had an appointment with you the day before his death. One moment. Uh, let me just check. Yes, that's right. His ministry had loaned out a picture for a special exhibition in the London Modern. We brought it back on that day to his office, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. Uh, which picture was it? The Portrait of Cecil Rhodes by William James Thurber. How many people did you send? Two, like always. What are their names? I can't tell you exactly. I haven't received all of the papers yet. They're still in the post. But you could ask at the museum. Our people have to sign transport documents there. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks for now. Goodbye. Hmm, G8 Summit. I was sure something. Wasn't that in D.C.? It all went off. National Guard and everything. I'll take a closer look at it on the web. Interesting. Okay, about time we got out to see some people. I'll speak to Henson's widow tomorrow. And with his assistant. 
Let's see how she's coping with her new wealth. And I still have to get to the museum, what with this art shipper and all. Better do that now before they close. They've redone the whole forecourt. Nice pigs. We could do with one of those for the loft. We've already got enough pigs there. So, shall we go in? Mm. What am I going to do if one of my old colleagues recognizes me? You say hello. This is a museum. They'll be expecting visitors. I just don't want anyone to ask awkward questions. Come on. Mike's right. They'd be happy to see you. We're not doing anything illegal. Not yet, anyway. So, off you go. I'll get my hands on the building plans in the meantime. Good. Bernard, you check out the camera system. I'll look for the painting. Is your phone on? Of course. Then let's meet back here in an hour, all right? Good luck. Impressive. Dan, I think I know him. You'll manage. I'll concentrate on the cameras. Let's go. We'll split up. He'll only be able to follow one of us. The guard's over here. Not really my thing. Aha. Uh -huh. It looks like a stylized campfire. It's a lock with fingerprint authentication. Only certain guards can get in there. Can Mike crack that thing? Mike can crack anything. A fingerprint lock? We'd be best off if we had the finger that fits. I've got some bolt cutters and bandages if you want. Funny. A fingerprint would be enough, right? Absolutely. Okay. We've got to find out which of the guards go in and out of there. Mike? What? Do you want to come in here and have a look at the lock? I can't right now. I'm in the middle of penetrating the architect's server. We'll manage without you. Quiet now. I've got to concentrate. I'll talk to one of the security guards. You do that. I'm turning you off. The museum building plan. Lots of cameras here. Is it a new system? Well, it wasn't there when I worked here. It won't be that easy. We've got to find the surveillance room. There used to be a security room on the ground floor. That could be it. Got it. Mm. 
The museum floor plan. They're storing stuff here for the next rubbish collection. Definitely. Okay. Just a heap of old crap. Shot you. What are you looking for down here? The jets? Uh, uh, yes, yes, exactly. Toilets are upstairs. Now, out of here, all right? All right, all right. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Problems, Barney? My God. He's gone again. I'm in the cellar. Gotta come upstairs again. I'm with you, Catherine. Okay. Then I'll go through to the other exhibition room. Good. There are quite a few. Okay. Okay, Catherine. I'm ready over here. All right. Then let's meet outside. Mike, what about the server? Mike, where are you up to? Just about ready. Jeez. Oh, come on, stupid thing. I don't believe it. Does this damned admin want to give me a proper workout or what? My notebook. Everything soldered together myself. Blindfolded.
Ah, thank you. Welcome to the Wilbur and Thompson intranet. Ha, <laughs> these amateurs. Voila, the whole plan. Beautifully cleanly labeled, and all of the security systems are there too. Children? Not now. You know who's just hacked the superhumanly protected network of Wilbur and Thompson then? Super Mike, master of the digital tides. No, don't thank me, it's just my daily bread, making the impossible possible. Brill, Mike. Now shut your gob. I need to speak to an ex-colleague. Is that the sum of your appreciation of a genius? Shut your gob, Mike. You just said we shouldn't thank you. Come on, turn it off. Ta, <laughs> great. You guys are real smart asses. Audacious construction. It's orange. Looks somehow rather sad. Tony? Hey, you're Tony Warner, right? Uh, do I know you? Tony, how's Maud? What about little Rachel? She must be going to school by now. Uh, wait, uh, Catherine? <laughs> You're Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe it. Catherine! Oh my god, you are Grown up? Come on, say it. Yeah, well, yes. Really grown up. Ooh, you're looking good. God, ooh, how long has it been? Seven years, Tony. You had that ridiculous moustache back then. Looked like a porn star. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you remember that? Well, uh, Maud forced me to shave it off. I feel completely naked. Don't look at my face. <laughs> you look great. Yeah, you too. Tell me, what are you up to now? Are you still studying? No, no, you must have graduated ages ago, right? Yeah, well, it was a difficult journey, definitely. But I did it. At some point, they just didn't want me there anymore. And now? Are you working? Still doing guided tours? Got a family? Well, a bit of this and that. And no family. I still haven't met the right guy. But I'm sharing an extremely chaotic flat. That's already enough for me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Y you had those friends. Uh, you're still living with them? But weren't you going to start a revolution or something? Did you manage? Sure. Don't you read the papers? Oh, yeah, of course. You've just bumped off Henston. Exactly. In cold blood, with a sawn-off stiletto heel. And now we're planning the ultimate economic crash. Well done. Burn down the Ministry of Culture while you're at it. They just cut my wages for the third time. I'll make a note. And how did things pan out here? It was probably hell here without me. Yeah, worse than hell. We had this break in five years ago. After that, the place was converted into some kind of Alcatraz. I saw. It's full of cameras now. Yep. Yeah. At the same time, they fired half of the guards. The cameras see more and cost less. Next month, they're kicking Stevens out. Remember him? Stevens? No. Yeah, poor sod. Used to teach art at a secondary school. They sacked him for being drunk. He dried out and started working here. They needed some poor fool to change the hard drives as long as the system was still just semi-automatic. And now it's completely automatic. That's right. Now there's just patrols into the security room. No permanent crew. He's already got his papers. Now he's getting drunk every day. He's in the pub by five o'clock. Oh dear. And you? Are you worried about losing your job? We're all worried, aren't we? I mean, have a look around. Everyone's wondering who's going to be next to go. They're scared of terrorists, thieves, burglars, criminals. They cling to the feeling that they're safe. That there are heroes watching over them. And well, I'm one of these heroes. Maud and I bought a house three years ago. I need the job. You won't lose it, I'm sure. 
<laughs> the director has already warned us. The people leaving now won't be replaced, and if you make a mistake, you're out. How's Maud doing? Is she working again? The director was generous enough to give her a cleaning job. She polishes the whole place once a week, at night. <laughs> Sounds like a tough break. Yeah, but she's a tough girl. She's working tonight, by the way. My night off. Uh-huh. And that means... What do you think? Time for the pub. I'll take over from Stevens there as a worthy replacement. Oh, dear. And the children? Oh, they won't wake up. I give them sleeping pills, you know. Absolutely fail-safe. Maud hasn't noticed a thing. Don't look like that. My nephew's looking after them. That means he's secretly watching my DVDs and emptying the fridge. That's what babysitters are for. Hey, why don't you come along? What, on your pub crawl? Yeah, of course. First, I'll get you really drunk, and then we'll talk about the old days. <laughs> that sounds great. You're married, Tony. Oh, damn. I completely forgotten. Well, whatever. Then we'll really talk about the old days. Hmm? What do you say? I'll think about it. Okay, Tony, I've got to go. What about this evening? We'll see. Otherwise, we can meet up soon. Damn. If I don't get my moustache. See you later, Tony. Is it big, or am I small? Sweet! It looks somehow melancholic. A strange installation. I'm not sure what he's doing there. Guys? An old friend of mine. Can you believe it? We're preparing the ultimate break in here, and the dam goes off and flirts for hours on it. At least I now know where we can find the guard from the surveillance room. He's over in the pub on the other side of the street. I'm on my way. You stay in the van, Mike. I'll do this. You can have a beer afterwards. Sure. So, it has to be here. Only cold stuff. I know that from home. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be all that much going on yet. Ah, the pub's open. Nice. Hi. Hi. Hi, Henry. Leave it. What can I get you, sweetheart? Let me see. Fine arts pub. I think I get it. Football. Not exactly my specialist subject. I'm already getting a headache just looking at that stuff. I'm already getting a headache just looking at that stuff. think about beer after last night. It's rather more something for Bernie. A cup of tea, please. Oh, no, girl. 
Can't you order something decent? Shut it, Henry. Cup of tea for the lady on its way. Nice pub. I like it. Is it your place? You want to buy it, sweetheart? Is it on the market? Ah, oh, you bet. You can have the whole thing and everything in it. Paintings, barman, annoying regulars, all for a fixed price. Sounds attractive. How much? Oh, mere 40,000 quid, plus 290 for the tea. Then let's start with the tea. I tell you what, darling, if you buy this dump, I'll pay for your tea, all right? You can pay off your own tab first, Stevens. Come on, girl. Keep me company. I don't like drinking alone. Let her drink her tea in peace. Don't be like that. Let's have a drink. Come on. My wife won't mind. His wife's on the family program at Alcoholics Anonymous. You're a scumbag, Chuck. Come on, girl, don't listen to that tattooed idiot. Have a drink with me, hey? Stevens, you're harassing my guests. It's all right. I think he's rather sweet. <laughs> Takes all sorts. So here I am. Hey, Chuck, see this? You and your tattoos can take a running jump, mate. The girl knows a real gentleman when she sees one, eh? Hey? What are you drinking? His fourth Guinness. <laughs> He's a plonker, ain't he? Trying to make me look bad in front of a pretty lady, the jealous git. I'll have a Guinness too, please, Chuck. I like this girl. Come on, Chuck, pull her a pint. A beer for the lovely lady on its way. You work over there in the museum? No. Not really. I'll be finished next month. Sack. I'm sorry. What are you going to do after that? Yeah, well, I guess I'll be keeping me on my chuck company more often. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. It's all right. You see, girl, since the break in, the management has installed all kinds of security. Humans are too fallible for them. Don't see enough, don't hear enough, go on holiday, make mistakes. Which break-in was that? A couple of cheeky fellas cleaned out half the Turner exhibition, didn't they? They bribed a couple of guards. The paintings were apparently for some weapons make. But they could never pin it. Anyway, the museum then decided that the human guards are the weakest link in the security system. Then they started to move everything over to automatic surveillance. I've never heard about that case. Yeah, well, they kept it hush hush for a while. They thought they might have been able to uncover something bigger. That's why they kept it quiet. Well, I'd better be off. It was nice to meet you, Henry. Ah, the pleasure was all mine, darling. But, sir, uh, you didn't tell me your name. Oh, yeah, I'm Tracy. Uh, well, then. Well, what do you say, Tracy? Can I see you again? Can I have a number? We'll see, all right. But I've really got to go now. Sorry. Wait a minute. What about your tab? Ah, oh, what a scumbag. The drink's on me. So I'll add it to all the rest, yeah? Oi! I pretty much own shares in your bloody pub. That makes me your boss, Chuck. Huh? Have a think about that while I'm taking a leak. There you go, Chuck. The pub's already sold. Now or never. Now or never. I need his glass. So, the glasses have been swapped over. Time for me to go. Okay, guys. Maybe I'll see you around. I hope so. And if you change your mind about this place... <laughs> sure, I'll let you know. Okay, that's it. Then off home.
Hey, it's me again. You smell of alcohol. I'm disappointed. Sure. What have you been doing? We've been working. I've got the plans, Bernie has the camera locations. And now the million dollar question, what have you got? A bad conscience. Good grief. Bernard, she's taking one of her turns. You take care of it. I'm going out for some fresh air. Don't look like that. How am I looking? Worried, fatherly, therapeutic. I hate that. What happened? Do you want to talk about it? I told you. Useless therapy crap. Okay. And what else? What do you mean, what else? Nothing else. We're a bunch of idiots, that's all. Good. What makes you say that? We steal from the wrong people. I've just spoken to the guard from the museum. He lost his job because there was a break-in years ago, and now a computer does his job. Have you got his fingerprints? Yes, I've got his bloody fingerprints. I conned him, and now we've got his fingerprints. But it wasn't right. But why not? Because he's no stinking rich art dealer, Bernard. He's just some poor guy in a museum who gets fired because of people like us. People who break in and deceive and steal. We don't take anything from anyone, Catherine. We take something back. You said that yourself often enough. Don't tell me what I said. Isn't that true anymore? I don't know. You need a rest. Perhaps. Listen, I understand you. But we've just agreed to do this thing. I've already spoken to Holmes, not Bombs. We've got to go through with it. I know. Look, we'll talk it all through, and tomorrow the world will look a better place. Okay? Hmm. Okay? Okay. Okay, here's the building plans. Perhaps you'll be interested to know how hard it was to get hold of them. Well, first there were multi-encrypted codes, then the server routing, very clever. Then I had to... Yeah, that's great, Mike. You're the best. Now, let's have a good look at them. Catherine's got to get to bed. Excuse me? I've got to get to bed? I've been working on this for 13 hours. Mike, please. It's all in tiny writing. Where's the magnifying glass? Ah, I've already got it. The construction plans for the museum. The idiots really have written all over the plan. They could afford to. It all looks bomb-proof to me. There's gotta be a way. Those other guys managed to break in seven years ago. Yes, but that was before all this equipment was installed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's this door here? Here? Hmm. Oh, there seems to be a connection to the Thames. Impossible. We won't get through there. That bend in the Thames is underwater. Then we'll just have to dive. Oh, no. Not diving again. I'm not going through all that again. There. There's a drain that runs under the museum. That might work. We've got to try it. We'll dive. Fine. Super. You two dive. I'll hold the fort. There aren't any sharks in the Thames, Mike. Oh, great. Then it's completely safe. But I can't open the steel door. Come on, Catherine will be with you. I hate you both. All right, then. Stay here. We'll just go and have a little look first. You can at least get the boat ready, okay? I'm on my way. Okay, let's go. Catherine, come on. We're ready to go. Wow, you're quick. Are you ready? Absolutely. Okay, Bob. Let's go. Ahoy there. There it is. The inlet over there. Hmm. From up here, it looks like the access has got a grill over it. Perhaps you can get through underwater. We'll have to have a look. Okay, then I'll dive down. I can't.
can't get through. The drain has a grill right down to the bed. Damn, we should have brought some to Wait, I've got an idea. Now back at full speed. I hope this works. to the museum cellars. What kind of lock has the door got? Wait, I'll have a look. Get a move on. There are cars parking up there now. Nearly done. I really don't want to know what's swimming around in all that. is much too small. No problem. A normal security cylinder. The make is Atom, number 873562. Bernard? Someone's coming. Okay, I'm coming back. Be there in a minute. No, stay in there. Catherine, stay in there. Left-hand traffic, a total nightmare. Hey, there's the Thames. I think I'll go stretch my legs a bit. Hey, good evening. Yeah, you? Well, are you fishing? Uh, just out for a walk? Well, it's a nice evening for it. I used to have a boat, too. It was a little bit smaller, of course. Ah, you're diving. Well, well. <laughs> Can you see anything down there in that suit? My, my girlfriend's watch fell in the water. I see. Was it expensive? Uh, yeah, yeah, quite. Uh, family heirloom. You'd have been better than that. Have you found it? Sorry? The watch. Did you find it? Oh, right. No. No, no. Too dark. It's all mud down there. What a shame. Say, is anyone allowed to dive in the Thames? With a diving license, yeah, of course. Ah. Okay. Oh, well, I've got to go. All right, then. Have a nice evening. Damn. Why didn't you stay down there? I told you someone was coming. I thought I could do it quicker. And I wasn't to know that you would start having a nice chat with him. He spoke to me. My girlfriend lost her watch. Great story. I told you to stay down there. Let's get out of here, right now. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Have you got a minute? I have a few questions to ask you. It depends. Jack Stern, International Police, Washington. It won't take long. What's this about? The break-in was years ago. Just a few routine questions. Your museum works with the logistics company Art Trends, right? Yes. And? Do you know their staff? Hmm. A couple. Why? Is there a problem? No, everything's fine. I'm just knocking on a few doors. Like I said, just routine. Have you noticed anything different about them? Change in personnel, unreliability, problems? Hmm. There's been a bout of illness recently, but I guess that's more to do with the fact that their guys are so badly paid. Hmm. Okay. When was the last time that someone from Art Trans was here? Uh, day before yesterday. The new exhibition on British history. Many of the pieces are loans. 
Uh, good. I'll have a little look around. I haven't been to a museum for ages. Oh, and uh, could you tell me where I can get a drink around here? Here, uh, the Fine Arts Pub, across the road. Okay, thanks. Enjoy yourself. Gross. Hey, looks like it does in my office. Sheesh. Not so easy to differentiate between the exhibits and the garbage. that from somewhere. Hmm, therapy maybe? Susan made something like that when we went through our separation. Boring. My nephew paints like that too. He must be a genius. What the hell? At least something's recognizable. What a heap of junk. The pub's opposite, he said. I'll go over and get a drink. Oi, mate, can you lend me some dosh? At least enough for ten shots. Wow, not bad. I hope they've got more of what he's had inside. No Kool-Aid, no shakes, no Jim Beam. They're living in the Stone Age here. Not much happening inside there. Nice pub, really retro. Well, I checked out in this cheap hotel, washed my face down in the dirty Evening. Well. Good evening. Breakfast my God, what did you give the poor guy outside? Oh, you mean Steven? Yeah, well, he's had enough for today. Not much business in here. You telling me? Well, why is that? Holidays? The place is a good location, in the middle of the city, right next to the museum, right next to the Thames. Well, people have got less money in their pockets. They prefer drinking at home. The guy outside didn't much look like a millionaire either. A regular? Unfortunately, his tab is worth more than half of this place. Feels like yeah, poor kid. He's about to lose his job at the museum. Now he sits here every day and drinks on credit. And buys drinks for girls. Oh, well, I must be in this cheap hotel. Okay, thanks. Wash my face down in that dirty well. I breakfast was a bottle of hard burn boots. Got a pump gun and a 45 to choose. Miles Can I see the paper? The yeah, sure. Standing in the line of fire. Nasty thing with that minister. Have you read it? Yeah, poor sod. That's what you get that. What do you think happened? No idea. Perhaps he just took too much coke. He had plenty of enemies, I hear. Of course he did. But you can't move an inch here in London without the police knowing about it. If something happened, we'd know about it by now. I haven't seen any police on the street so far. You gotta look up, mister. On the roofs. On the street lights. There's a camera on every building. It's called CCTV. When you spend a normal day in London, you're recorded more than 300 times. Not bad. And still people can steal the numbers from Big Ben. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? But I'll tell you something. They'll catch him. You seen the photo? That was CCTV too. You can't make out much. Oh, you just wait. They'll catch him. Okay. Well, I gotta go. Down in this cheap hotel and wash my face down in the dirty well. Hmm, weird people here. But this CCTV thing has given me an idea. I gotta talk to the chief. It's 
So how was it yesterday? You were back late. I was already asleep. What were you doing so late? First we had to clear the way into the drain. Then Bernard had a bit of a chit-chat with a passerby. Very funny. Seriously, there was really someone there. What? Someone saw you and spoke to you? Tell me, are you guys mental? Do you actually want to go to jail? I tried to tell Catherine. I don't believe it. Who was this guy? Probably just a tourist. He had an American accent. What did you tell him? Uh, that Catherine was diving for a lost watch. Brilliant. Really, absolutely brilliant. Why don't we just send an invitation to the police? You two are really getting old. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Next time you can go and think of something better, smart ass. Come on now, stop that. It didn't go perfectly, I admit, but nothing happened. And the drain is clear now. How's the fingerprint going? I haven't done it yet. Where's the glass? In your room. Okay, I'll have a look at it. We also need a list of the guards who are on duty tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it all. That way, I'll at least know that you guys won't screw it up. Pipe down now. <laughs> See you later. I've got things to do. Okay, let's go. Okay, there's the glass. I've got my Pastor Jim's charge card here somewhere. The platinum version. A UV lamp. That's silver nitrate spray. Just the thing for the hobbyist criminal technician. Okay, that's it then. Just a mo. It won't do anything like that. Right then, now I can see everything. The story unfolds. Okay, now I've only just got to transfer it over. Voila! The artificial security guard's finger is ready in 0.0 seconds. I'm a genius. All right, I've done it. Where's Bernie? In town. Again? Am I the only one who's actually preparing a break-in here? Take it easy, Mike. You're the greatest. Exactly. For one, I've got one of Mr. Stevens' fingers here. A 100% copy of the real thing and fully functional. Ah. Uh. I've also got hold of the staff list. A guy called Michael Nesbitt is on duty in the museum tomorrow night. Nesbitt, okay. Is that all right? No qualms because you knew the guy from the past or something? Don't get on my nerves, Mike. 
Just asking. Everything is absolutely fine. What's the number of the service telephone? One double zero six two three four. Did Bernie say when he'll be back? No. I also don't know what these important things are that he always needs to do. We'll discuss all the details tomorrow morning. There's a message for you on the artifone. Your father, I think. Good grief. He's called a few times, hasn't he? Looks like it. What's up with him so suddenly? Just the same as ever. He can't deal with the fact that he's a pig. All oh, right. All right, then. I'm upstairs, OK? OK. There you are. When did you get back? It must have been quite late, right? Sorry, I ended up hanging out in town a bit. Hey, look who's gracing us with a visit. Bernard, now there's a surprise. Okay, guys, time for a briefing. So, the London Modern. I've had another look at the plants. This is what we're going to do. Tomorrow, Bernard and me will take the boat to the drain by the museum early evening. Mike, you park your van in front of the museum. Tap into the cameras and be at the ready. I'll swim through the drain and get into position in front of the cellar door. Bernard, you position yourself in front of the museum in a guard's uniform. At 11 p.m., they change the guards. At 10.50, the guard will unlock the main door. That gives us a window of almost 10 minutes. At 10.50, I'll call the internal phone in Exhibition Area 2. While the guard's on his way there, Bernard enters the museum, goes to the surveillance room, opens the door and turns off the recorders. Mike, you watch over the cameras and let Bernard know when he can leave the building again. I'll open the cellar door with the bump key and then go upstairs. Then I'll swap the pictures and head straight back. Bernard, in the meantime, you should be back at the van. You two get out of there without attracting attention. I'll take the boat. We'll meet back at the loft. Is everything clear? Crystal. Good. Then please go and check the kit and prepare the boat and the van. I'll go round to Roberts. Hopefully he's finished. Robert? Hey, how are you? Fine. You don't look very well. Uh, the painting's finished. Great. You're a treasure. We're doing it tonight. Are you nervous? Well, yeah, a bit. But that's part of it. Sure. You'll manage. Robert, what's wrong with you? Has something happened? Can we help you? Ah. Uh. Everything's fine. Perhaps I'm just getting a bit too old for the stress. Come on now. You can tell me. 
Are you still afraid? Well, I've been thinking, Catherine. Oh? What is it? You know, I think it's time for you to quit. It's time for all of us to quit. You're scared that we'll get caught, right? Things have changed, Catherine. This isn't just fun anymore. It was never just fun. Yes, it was. A couple of do-gooders having fun playing Robin Hood. It's not like that anymore. You're saying that as if we were terrorists. We're not causing anyone any harm. We help people. Ah, that's what we want to believe, Catherine. But of course we cause people harm. Those who we deceive, those who we lie to, those who we steal from. We aren't the liars and thieves in this world. Yes, we are. I really don't know what's got into you all of a sudden. What's different now to the past five years? Is someone threatening you? You're too young to throw your life away. And you're too old to continue going on like this. Oh, you sound like my father. I sound like someone who cares for you. I know that. You need a rest. Perhaps we all need a bit of a break. We'll take a break after the summer, okay? I promise. Is there anything you need? Have you got enough money? Uh, I'll be fine for the time being. Give Bernard a few more pounds instead. Why? Is he broke? He borrowed 2,000 from me. Why did he do that? He said that he still owes his ex-wife money. Why doesn't he talk to me about that? You aren't supposed to know anything about this. I thought I'd tell you because you're such close friends. I thought we were too. Don't be so hard on him. He's ashamed of himself. Ashamed of himself? You men really are weird. Okay, I've got to go now. The others will be waiting. Say hello from me. And take care of yourselves. You look after yourself. And don't worry. I'll call you tomorrow, if everything goes to plan. Just a moment. A perfect copy. There we go. Ah, there you are. Did everything go okay? Yeah, it's all good. I've got the picture. And? How's McBride doing? Is he still having his panic attacks? I'll tell you later. Have you got everything ready? Of course. Ready to go. Okay, friends. Break a leg. See you at the museum. All right, then. Take care of yourselves. Then let's go. Just a minute. I want to ask you something, Bernard. 
Have you got money problems? Why? What makes you say that? Bernard, we are friends. If you... If there's a problem I should know about... I don't gamble anymore. That's what you wanted to know, right? Don't be offended. I'm just asking because... Who have you spoken to? No one. What are you always doing in the city, Bernard? Are you spying on me? Is there a reason for me to? Listen, I've got things to sort out with Michelle. Private things. Satisfied? Since when have you been back in contact? I thought... Catherine, we're friends and we live together. You're important to me. But I don't need to keep a log of my life for you, okay? I'm a few years older than you. There are lots of things I can decide without you, okay? Okay. Let's go then. We're late. Mike? We're there now. Roger. I'm in position. Let's wait until it gets dark, okay? Exactly. Bernard will get changed here at the boat and then go to the surveillance room. I'll get ready to dive then. Are you guys ready? Of course. Always. Okay. Then let's get started. <sighs> I'm at the door. Bernard? Everything all right? I'm at the entrance. Mike, where's the guard? In the target area. Okay. I'll call the phone now. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now, go. Okay, Mike. Good work. There we go. Let me know when you're ready. Apparently, they're turned off overnight. Aha! Here's the cable. That's it. Then get yourself out of there. On my way. Catherine, it's up to you now. Where's the guard? In the corridor at the front. Catherine, go. Bernard, come to the van. It's made of marble. It's Athena. The goddess of wisdom. Cool. That looks like a Roman bust. Wow. The Middle America section's being rebuilt. I'm in the cellar. Locked. I'm there now. Hurry up. He's coming back. Damn.
I managed to get through the cellar. and not one bit of shut-eye. Still 80 degrees out there and the darn heap doesn't have aircon. The present position? I'm back at square one. Ellen Henston is happy that her charming husband's dead and she's not making any secret of it. But she's got an alibi and he'd signed over a couple of properties to her. For tax reasons, of course. She's now free to enjoy some good times with that old Henston. Seems to get on awfully well with her gardener, too. But hey, what's that matter to me? Of course, she's going to contest the will, too, and I can totally understand that. I've also, of course, spoken to the main beneficiary, Michelle Fielding, as far as that was possible. It was impossible that she fulfilled any assistant duties whatsoever. She can barely count to three. She doesn't have an alibi and doesn't actually need one. I don't think she could even spell the word murder. So who else do we have? Nancy Jenkins is a hate-filled prostitute. Laureen Myers is a nice, cold businesswoman, but neither of them would kill anyone. Maybe the old turkey really did just keel over himself. Well, sometimes it is the right ones whose numbers come up. I've spoken to the picture shippers. They're completely harmless. The only thing that occurred to me was that they both looked pretty unwell, and one of them was wearing a darned expensive watch. Probably a fake from China. I'll have to tell the chief that everything's just dandy here. Henson's dead, nobody's missing him. End of story. Oh, what's all the darn racket about? Hmm, that's coming from the museum. What the hell's going on there? I'm gonna go take a look. My computer. Hmm. I wouldn't know what to look for. Stop! Stay where you are! Evening? What's going on here? Put your hands up! Hey, hey, wait a second. Keep cool. I parked close by. I thought you might need some help. But... Hands up! Now! All right, all right! I'm a policeman. Jack Stern, International Police. Yeah, we'll soon find out who you are. Listen, my ID is in the car. If you could just... You're staying put. I've already called the police. You can tell them what you're doing here. Come on, man. Just let me get my ID from the car. Stay where you are! I only want to get my darn ID, you bonehead. <laughs> Sorry. We'll have to wait for the police first. Well, heroes. How did you sleep? Badly. Not at all. I dreamt that a special commando unit burst down the door and took me off to prison. And I don't want to talk about what happened next. I, I was just laying awake. I had things to think about. Hey, what's wrong with you guys? All in all, it went really well. Sure. We were within an inch of getting caught. We're not doing it like that again. I'd rather go on demos again. That's better for my nerves. I really don't know what's wrong with you two. We're doing the handover soon, and then we'll distribute the money. That's great, isn't it? This is the biggest deal we've ever done. Hmm. And if they catch us, we'll get the toughest punishment we could ever wish for. Stop that, Mike. The guy at the jetty saw us. What's more, the camera at the car park saw us. If that damn alarm hadn't gone off... I'm sorry, can we leave it at that? So, when's the stupid handover? At three. All right then, let's go. Bernie, are you coming? I can't. I've got an appointment. Again. Listen, what's actually going on? You've got appointments every five minutes. Leave him. Why? What is this? A pensioner's conspiracy? Bernard has private things to clear up, Mike. Leave him be. Ah, private things. Hell, I think I've got a couple of private things to sort out too. Instead, I hang around with you two, almost get locked up and live off £3.50, because I apparently owe my every waking hour to making this a better world. Mike, that's enough now. We can talk about that later. Later? Later? Heck, 
Right, then let's go now. See you later, Bernard. Here we are. The same as last time, right? Correct. Have you calmed down yet? I wouldn't like to go in there with the feeling that you'll suddenly go mad and run off. Ah, rubbish. There's the guy. So, here we go. All right. Catherine, nice to see you again. Have you got the painting? In the suitcase. I knew I could count on you. You have ideals. People with ideals are determined and reliable. Then I hope you have ideals too. You'll get the money, if that's what you mean. Don't you want to check the suitcase first? Why, no. You would not deceive me. Why do you believe that? You are too scared. And your little friend down there. He's even more scared than you. He knows that it wouldn't be good to deceive me. You said we were determined idealists. That's the difference between idealists and idiots. The idealist knows when to be scared. The idiot runs blindly to his ruin. Give me a sign if you want to get out of there. The view is even more impressive today, don't you think? Mm. I have another job for you. It would please me if we were to continue our fruitful business relationship. No, say no. Tell me more. Here's an envelope. I'm assuming you like Paris. What do you have in mind? Ten million dollars for the painting you'll find in the envelope. If you can deliver within ten days. You've got to say no. Let me see it. Be my guest. Fine. You're crazy. These guys are insane. I'm bringing you down now. Ah, your young friend's getting a little scared. That's good. He'll be trying even harder. It was a pleasure doing business with you. I'll see you in ten days. Is everything okay? Oh, great. Do you really think it's a good idea to do business with these lunatics? You heard what he'll pay. We would be crazy if we didn't do it. Which painting does he want then? It's got to be the Mona Lisa at least. No, I would have declined then. A portrait of George Washington. What? He's gonna spend that kind of money on that? Catherine, there's something not quite right about this guy. You worry too much. Perhaps he says some strange things, but so far everything's gone well. And we're not going to get another chance like this in the foreseeable future. We should have a closer look at the guy. Do that, if it'll settle your fears. Come on, don't pull that face. Let's just get this thing done, and then we'll all go on holiday. That'd be good for Robert, too. All right, then. Just a minute. There we go. Sorry to interrupt again. Can you check something for me? Sure.
There you go. That's what you're looking for, right? Wait, I'll quickly copy it onto the stick for you. Great. Then I'll make my way to Roberts. See you soon, okay? Yeah, yeah. Sure. The projector. Robert? Robert? I've got some news. We're going to do the deal of the century. Robert? What's wrong? Aren't you talking to me? Hello, Catherine. Hi. What are you looking at out there? I'm just looking at the clouds. Uh-huh. You're not any better, are you? Catherine, your father called me. What? Where did he get your number? He didn't say. He's worried about you. He wanted to warn me. Wanted me to talk to you. Warn? About what? Is he trying to intimidate you now? Oh, that's so typical. Who are we working for right now, Catherine? For a good thing. Are you sure? Who is the man you met at the London Eye? Do you know his name? What's his name got to do with it? Did my father talk to you about that? Your father warned us about doing business with certain people. People who are ruthless and insane. Oh, he should know about that. How does he know what we're doing? You didn't tell him about it, did you? No. He didn't say it in so many words, but... I got the impression that he knows. He thinks we're in danger, Catherine. In great danger. Tom? He must have spoken to Tom. Who's Tom? My ex-boyfriend. I told him a little bit about it. But just hints, really. My father must have spoken to him. You told him what? Nothing bad, really. Just that we... Yeah, well, that we... Redistribute. Well, bravo! And he told your father. That's how it must have happened. It's possible that my father hired a detective. He'd stop at nothing. Perhaps that's why you feel like you're being watched. I think he's really worried, Catherine. He sounded honest. We're stopping all of this. Today. Immediately. We... we can't do that. Yes, we can. I've just sealed a new deal. Ten minutes ago. Then you'll just have to unseal it. I can't. Why not? You're scared of the guy yourself. It seems your father isn't far from the truth. Listen, I've already spoken to Mike about it. We're going on holiday after this one, and if you all want, we can stop completely. But we've got to do this deal. I've accepted it. <sighs> what is it this time? The Musée de Paris. It's a portrait of George Washington. When? We've got ten days. <sighs> Are you with us? Please. You've got to call Tom. I want to know what he told your father. Yes, I'll call him. We've got to leave tomorrow morning. Will you manage? I hope so. I'm sorry, Robert. I should have spoken to you all first. Yes, you should have. The projector.
So, I'll leave the USB stick with the picture on it here, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do that. I... I'll be off then. Uh, have a good trip. Guys? Hey there! Hey, Mike. Hi. Where's Bernard? Not here, like always. Oh, I don't believe it. Had to go to town, but I've already spoken to him. How was it at McBride's? Good. Everything's fine. He'll do it. Hallelujah. We've got to pack. We're leaving tomorrow morning. We'll put the plan together once we're in Paris. Why the rush? Shouldn't we...? No, we shouldn't. And we ought to clear out the loft just in case. Just in case? You mean, in case the cops turn up here, or what? Better safe than sorry. Mike, you usually like to be careful about these things. So let's be careful now, okay? You don't need to tell me. Perhaps you ought to have a think about whether you're careful enough. <sighs> I'm going downstairs. Got a call to make. Hi, Tom. This is Catherine. Hey, Catherine. Nice to hear from you. I was starting to... I've got to talk to you, Tom. Oh, okay. Did my father call you again? Why? Did he or didn't he? Yes, he did. Is that bad? I don't know yet. What did you talk about? Yeah, well, about you, of course. You know, Catherine. He really misses you. He means it. You should give him another chance. What did you tell him about me? Nothing. Nothing in particular. That you're doing well. I told him you're politically active. That you're still hanging out with people from uni. That kind of thing. A bit more precise, please. Did you tell him that I'm a criminal or something? Of course not. What makes you think that? You aren't. You aren't, are you? No, of course I'm not. There. You see? So what's the problem? Nothing. Nothing at all. I just wanted to know if you talked. You're not very well, are you? Come on, Catherine. I know you. What's wrong? Don't you want to tell me? No, Tom. I don't want to. I don't want to tell you anything right now. Sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I'm not really feeling too good. Listen, I'll call again, okay? I've got things to do today. Okay. Do that. Take care of yourself, right? You too. Who was that then? Were you listening in? I could hear you through half the house. Is there a problem? No, no problem. Are you sure? Catherine, if we're in trouble, then perhaps Bernard and I should know about it too. Have you packed yet? So you don't want to talk about it? There's nothing to talk about. Dad problems, that's all. Happy? Hey, what's wrong? Have you been arguing? No, everything's fine. And now I've got to go and pay in the money. No, I've done that already. What? When? But just now, I was in town. Didn't Mike tell you? You just took the money from my room? Yeah. Is that so bad? I thought the sooner we got the money out of the house, the better. After all, it's all incriminating evidence, isn't it? You can't just take things from my room. Especially not money. Why, is it your money? Of course. Catherine decides everything around here anyway. What we do, where we go, who we give the money to. Hey guys, what do you want from me? Have I done something wrong? No, not yet. Hopefully it'll stay that way. I thought we were friends. Friends trust one another. We're friends, aren't we? Of course we are. Then would you please stop going on at me? Hey, it's all right. Come on, Mike. I think Catherine needs some space. Okay, have you got everything? Everything sorted in the loft? Yep. Good. Off we go then.
an idiot. Country full of idiots. Twelve mortal hours of ID checks. Morons. I gotta talk to the boss straight away. I need to speak to the chief. Jack Stern on the job. Hey, Chief, how you doing over there? How are you doing? How was it in the custody of our British colleagues? Oh, so they called you. Yes, indeed. I had to confirm to the gentleman that you are a colleague of ours, Jack. I was rather inclined to say no. He could never be that mean, Chief. I know you've got a heart of gold. That'll do. I'd like to know how the damn inquiry's going. I'm right in the middle of it. I've checked out loads of his last contacts, and I'm just checking out an employee of an art logistics company who had been in his office. When you're not having to spend the night locked up. Come on, Chief. Don't bust my balls. That was a stupid mishap. A mistake. I just left my ID in the car. Hmm. Jack, the demand for answers is growing over here. If you can confirm that there was no criminal intent in Henston's death, then I'll pull you out straight away. Can you confirm that? No, I can't do that yet. I need access to a few more records. More records? Our colleagues here have a fabulous video surveillance system. It's called CCTV. Can you arrange for me to get access to the databanks? No. We'll do it the other way around. You tell me from when and where you need pictures. Oh, all right. Uh, the car park of the London Modern Museum. Last night, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Ah, what do you want? A souvenir video of your arrest? I just want to check something. Hmm. All right, then. I'll let you know. You're 24 karat, Chief. Oh. You'll get an email. There's a black van there. Now what's it doing there? Damn it, I can hardly read the number plate. Hey Chief, it's me. I can hear that. And? Finished watching TV? Almost. And now I've got a few new questions? I'm listening. I need login data for the British Vehicle Registration Plate Data Bank. Of course. Tell me, Jack, have you got any idea what kind of a fuss our English colleagues make every time I ask them for something? They're not especially generous with their data. Couldn't you have told me that before? Chief, please. Cut the soft crap. You'll get your damn login. But I want a report from you before the end of the week. Frittered away enough on hotel expenses already. I'm sleeping in the car, Chief. You're sleeping where? In the car. Don't come back at me with reason. I'm trying to get all angry here. So I'll get an email from you? Yes, goddammit. Thanks. has to be a fake one. Maybe it's just been altered.
Look, Mike Mensforth. Right, so I'll organize myself a little visit to the young fella. It has to be here. 24 Madras Embankment. Mr. Mensforth? Mr. Mensforth, open the door. Police. I've got a couple of things I need to ask you. Damn. No one there. Oh well, I'll have to have a look myself then. A normal security lock. Hey, that's my passport. Here in the case is another special little tool. My bump key, very useful. Works rather faster than a search warrant. Ha, there you go. I still got it. Mr. Mensforth? Are you home? Mr. Mensforth, this is the police. Hmm. Seems like there really is no one here. Oh well, I'll find my way around. It's a real nice place. Wow, nice and tidy. There's somebody here who's definitely way too old to be living in shared accommodation. A photo album. I don't understand all that much about it, but that's junk. Hey, 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 check this out. A computer freak, a geek, a couch potato. <laughs> you can see it straight away. These pimple-faced losers all live the same kind of life. Could this be my man? Mensforth? Hmm, I'll have a look around. Pretty depressing. Wow. How'd the guy get the dough to pay for that? Hmm. Looks like travel documents. Someone has gone to Paris. Huh. A business card. At last, something with a name on it. That'll help. Okay, let's see what we've got here. 
It's a certain Miss Winkler's business card from Megabase. It's got a phone number on it. Megabase Software Solutions. You're talking to Susan Winkler. Jack Stern, International Police. Hello. What can I do for you, Mr. Stern? I'm looking for a certain Mike Mensforth. Do you know him? Yes, of course. Mr. Mensforth works for us as a freelance, although he hasn't done anything for us in the past three weeks. Do you have his cell number? I don't know if... Yes, yes, you don't need to worry about that. It's fine. Oh, all right then. 01078 102 0987. Is there something wrong with Mr. Mensforth? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Thank you very much. Goodbye. The person you are calling is currently unavailable. Evening, Chief. Sorry for calling late. You get used to it. I've got an interesting lead. It's to do with a group of activists. It's possible that they somehow have something to do with the Henston case. Somehow? You got any evidence? Nothing solid yet, but I'm sure there's some connection. I just don't know what it is yet. Who are these people? Well, it looks like some kind of political activist community to me. Young, autonomous, or the like. That's not enough for an arrest. Not yet, and unfortunately, the three of them are fast. It would appear they're on their way to Paris, or they're already there. I've got a cell phone number for one of them. We can work out their exact location with that. How did you get into their apartment? Excuse me? Uh, sorry, the line just went. You didn't break in, did you? Let's just talk about the cell phone number, okay? Damn it, Stern, you're getting us all into deep water. So, what's the number? Uh, wait, it's 01078 I'll put that into the locator. You're the greatest, Chief. And you're the greatest suck-up. You'll get an email from the locating system. Thanks, Chief. Sweet dreams. guy is in Paris, in front of the Musée de Paris. With a smooth trip, I can be there in four or five hours. So let's go. The system will send me updates. He's not going to get away from me. I would just love to know what the kid's up to there. I don't. Let's go in there, get the painting, and go home. Would you stop wondering? Really? Sometimes you're like a little kid. All right, all right. So, let us now, with this elevated historical backdrop, perform the breaking of our lives. Is that better? Not much. What's that stuff you brought with you? The firecrackers. I want to have a bit of fun here, at least. Don't you dare. Why? It's the national holiday here next week. We're going to take part, aren't we? National holiday? Seriously? Of course. The 14th of July. They have a huge firework display. It's going to be great. Hmm. Not a bad idea. I agree. 
Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so. What? What are you talking about? Our model pupil is a bit slow on the uptake. Ah, oh, come on. Let's go in first. Hey! What don't I understand? Later. Come on. Everywhere stuffed with cameras. Okay. Time to check everything out. few real classics here. Completely packed with cameras. Okay. Only a pile of old stuff. There's another one of the things. Only a pile of old stuff. Only a pile of old stuff. Okay. Done. Our picture is in the side room. Mainly landscapes. Oh, wow. Well, they're not exactly short on cameras here. And you see those little holes down there near the floor? They look like laser ports to me. And? You know what to do with them? Not at all. Then you're gonna have to get learning. Sure looks that way. A few old masters here. Somehow, I really love these huge old paintings.
Voila! So that's all of them. There he is, George Washington. Okay, I think I've found the monitoring room. And? What kind of lock does it have? None at all, as far as I can see. Could be a type of automatic lock. I get the feeling that they're better protected here than at the London Modern. No chance of getting in there? I could knock. Maybe someone might open it. You just stay right there. Have you had a look outside? I'm looking at the outside window again. I'm at the window. It looks like there's a man inside. We've got to get him out somehow. Look at that! Is someone shooting? No, no. It frightened me to death, too. The kids are messing around with fireworks. Can't wait for the holiday. Oh yeah, something's happening up there. Tell me, have you quite finished? Stop that banging around immediately, you damn idiot. There are highly sensitive recording devices in here. Oh, I see. Sorry, I wanted to... You're sorry? You could set off an alarm in here with such a bang. Really? Of course, you fool. We use pressure gauges here. Aha! Uh -huh. And when the pressure suddenly changes... The whole alarm goes off. So what do you do on the 14th of July? I mean, there's a huge firework display, isn't there? We turn the system off during the display. Now get out of here! Isn't that dangerous? Uh, the museum has enough other security systems. So, quiet now. Okay, you are too old for this kind of child's play anyway. You're right. He's not very charming. Did you hear that? Absolutely. Very revealing. I agree. What did you say? Nothing, nothing. I was just uh, thinking out loud. Aha, uh -huh. all right. Uh, now I need to do my rounds. Good day to you. Yes, I can see him. He's coming straight over here. Excuse me, please. Do you have a moment, perhaps? I've always got time for a pretty young woman. Well, I've not been here for ages. And it's all changed so much. When was it all done? Oh, I presume you mean the exhibition space here. It was completed in 1989. You were probably just about born at that time. Mademoiselle. <laughs> so, he can do more than just grumpy. You're a flatterer, Monsieur... Duval. But you can call me Cédric, if you like. I must have been seven or eight when my father brought me here. He was always very interested in art and always out and about, too. He often used to take me along and then drag me into every museum with him. Then you had a very caring father. You should be grateful to him. Yes, probably. But like I said, it looked quite different here at that time. Much... Better? Ah, I know, I know. You're correct. Sadly, the refurbishment is awful. Those Philistines made our museum look like a subway station. No, it's really not all that bad. It's just, uh, modern. It's a gloomy bunker. You know what all the Parisians call the new vaults? The Socialist's Burial Chamber. That pig-headed Mitterrand built himself a mausoleum here. Oh, I can see you're a real fan. I've worked here for 30 years, and for 10 of them, I've had to endure the sound of pneumatic drills. When they were excavating the foundations, water came flooding in from the Seine side, and then a digger fell in when they broke into an unknown section of the catacombs. It was a disaster. Simple as that. I thought that the catacombs were on the other side of the Seine. That's what the engineers thought too. But the network of passages is amazing. 
Nobody in Paris really knows exactly where there's a tunnel and where not. Interesting. For sure. Mike, you back in the van? Yep, I heard. This special exhibition. Oh, this American rubbish. Forget the thing. It doesn't belong over here. No? Why not then? A museum is a place for art, not for politics. The exhibition is supposed to enhance Franco-American friendship. You know that? Right on our anniversary. So how long's the exhibition going to be here for? It was opened on July the 4th. That was the day the Americans made their declaration of independence. And it's staying here until the 14th of July, our national day of celebration. Ah, oh, well, you've almost done it then. Oh, damn. <laughs> I have to get back to the security room. Time flies when you're chatting with a pretty girl. Who didn't get in a single sentence either. Right then, enjoy yourself, little lady. Thank you, I have already. It was very, uh, enlightening. Guys, I'm coming to the van now. So now we know, huh? I've changed my mind. I do like it here after all. Let's live here and ask that old geezer if he wants to join us. That was a French nationalist, Mike. Ah, rubbish. You shouldn't be so bitter. I'll go in and ask him. Could you do a bit of research for us first? About what? Weren't you listening just now? Yeah, sure. And? Oh. What? We're waiting. All right, then. Just a second. Hit. Whoa, that was difficult. I had to apply all of my cryptographical knowledge and combinatory abilities. So? Rue Antoinette. That's the main entrance, guided tours daily on the hour. And? What do we say? Let's drive. We say thank you, Mike. We say, shut your gub, Mike. It must be at the front there. Looks pretty much like a tourist trap. How are we going to do this? I'll go in first and take a look around. Don't get yourself lost. Are you on the radio? Always. OK, see you in a minute. I can't go down there without a ticket. Ridiculous, these prices. One adult. Your 15 euros short, madame. The evening tariff is 40 euros. Merci bien. If it doesn't, you know where you can find us, if you ever get out of there at all. They buried the plague victims here because the cemeteries were all full. Passages. It's really creepy down here. There seem to be some tourist groups around here somewhere. I can't see anyone. I can only hear them. There are some barriers here. It's totally dark beyond them. Can you get through? Can you go on? You don't know what it looks like here, Bernard. 
I don't think I'm just going to merrily waltz through there. You can lose yourself completely down here. I'm writing this end of the network of passages was 300 kilometers long. Could take a bit longer. What can you see in the passages? I already said. Totally black. Hold on. It's light enough. Okay. With the torch, it's just about all right. Endless galleries and passages. We need a map. Hey, there's some graffiti back there. Yeah, the freaks aren't bothered about that. I have no desire to get myself lost down here. Without a map, you can't do anything. So what kind of graffiti is it? Can you read anything? Hmm. Hang on. It says... something to do with club. Club Electronique, I think. Sounds like a disco or something. Disco? A club is completely different from a disco. Oh, really? What's the difference, then? First of all, the Millennium. Discos are so 20th century. Get it? You know, black and white TV, telex machines, your heyday. Guys, I don't want to disturb you, but... Bernard doesn't know what a club is. We'll have the dumping gallery. Yeah, sure, Mike. Oh, I'm coming back up now. Ooh, pretty cold down there. We have to get a map from somewhere. The fold-out tourist thing isn't much use. Mike, that's your job. Sure. Maybe we ought to check out this disco. Club! It's a club! I know. Come on then, let's go. Club Electronique. I've got it. Open every day from 9pm. The guys obviously organize illegal parties in the catacombs. The police have wanted to bust them a few times. But? They could never find them in all the passages. The cops here are no brighter than in England. Or? These boys knew their way around here damned well. Which is exactly what we need to be able to do. So where is this place? In the Cartier Saint-Martin. How far is that? Just around the corner. Ten minute trip. Okay. Then let's go there. What? We can't go in a club now. How come? Bernie, it was no doubt a bit different in the 80s. But now there's no way you can go into a club before 1am. I think they open at 9. Yeah, I know. But it's uncool to go in there at 9. We've got you with us, Mikey. We're cool at any time of the day. Catherine, you tell him we can't go now. We're going. You're so uncool. I don't believe it. I can never be seen in Paris again. Best for you to drop me at the corner and I'll turn myself in. Don't joke about stuff like that. The cops are the last thing we need right now. Chief? Jack. Immaculate timing. It's the middle of the night. I didn't invent the time difference, Chief. Okay, okay. How's it going, then? Have you got him? Yeah, well, I'm in Paris. And? Where are your suspects? That's exactly the problem. The last bearings are five hours old. It would appear the server's a bit lame. Five hours ago, the guy was standing directly in front of the Musée de Paris, in the car park. And that's exactly where I am now, but he's gone. You'll have to give me his coordinates. Just a minute. Okay, I've got them. I'll send them to you manually. Tell me if you get them. Okay. Yes. There they are. There you go. Hmm. That's in the St. Martin quarter. Okay, thanks, Chief. I gotta go. I'll be in touch. Jack, wait. Jack, this is Jordan. Ah, Jordan. Do I have a date? In a way, yes. But you weren't wanted anymore. Don't underestimate my interest in dates. Amy Connolly is in jail. Perfect. Where? In Washington, Jack. She has been since last year. She was arrested in the riots during the G8 summit. <laughs> Could have seen that from my office window. Well, not a bad alibi. But if you still want your date... Uh, I'd rather not. Damn. Okay, we're there. Still doesn't seem to be a lot going on. Not a lot. Absolutely nothing going on. Look at the time. 
There's just one guy standing at the door, and he doesn't look like a visitor. More like a murderer. That's the doorman, isn't it? Yeah, he's got to be. It's a freaking club, Bernie. A club. They don't let just anybody in. They'll let us in. Me, perhaps, because I'm cool. Should I come with you? I think you ought to stay here for now. The guy looks like trouble. Without a woman, there's even more trouble. Better stay here. Mike and I'll go in. You're way too uncool, Bernie. Just look at your clothes. You look like a school teacher. Now pay attention, Mike. I'm not going to tell you twice. This is big boy's business, and you're still in short trousers playing with an action man. Now get your act together, okay? Oh. Good. Let's get on with it. I'll stay on the phone. Hi. Hi. Uh, we on a school trip then? I told you. Ah, a school teacher, huh? <laughs> you might want to go in for a snoop about, yes? It's going great. It's already open? Sure is. Good. Come on then, Mike. But not for you two, Joker. Uh, why not? Francois doesn't like snooping. Me neither. You get it? We're tourists. Come on, Mike. Let's go and get a drink. Hey! You're a bit slow on the uptake, aren't you? You stay out here. And Babyface here, too. Is this place yours? Have you got police ID? I'm telling you, we're not cops. If you're not a cop, then you better stop asking questions. Why not just disappear and take the boy with you, too? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay, boss. How much is it to get in? This here is a club, my friend. You need a membership card, and you don't have one. Is uh, 50 euros okay? Excuse me? What did you say? Each? I still uh, don't understand what you are on about. Each? Per hour? <laughs> ah, now I get it. You really do want to bribe me, you little freak. I want something to drink. Don't you guys here need any dosh or what? 100 euro? I can earn that in five minutes. And now you can't sod off. I've got some customers coming. Come on, Bernard. Let's go back to Catherine. That was really great. Impressive. A job for the big boys. You're so uncool. My grandma wouldn't even let you in her club. Wait, you see that? What? What he's doing there. He's selling drugs on the street. Yeah, and? So, what would the cops say about that? What? What's that supposed to mean? Are you serious? You want to, of your own free will, just, just say it. You're having a laugh. Catherine, you do it, okay? We go back over there, and when we're close by the entrance... Oh, no, come on, you can't be serious. Catherine? Okay, but not straight across. No, the next street down is close enough. Right, let's go then. No, you're not doing it, Bernie. You just can't... Now, come on. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Nothing's going to happen to anyone. I'm not doing it. Okay, I'll just go on my own then. No, wait, Bernie! Okay, I'm coming. Hey, boss. How's business, then? Oh, baby face. Your mate here fancies a bit of trouble, does he? Who knows? We get enough trouble in England already without having to go looking for it. Sometimes the cops turn up in time, sometimes they don't. Crap. You call the cops or what? You got problems with them? So they're on their way here? Yes, but they'll go away again. They're getting closer, damn it. Well, he was off like a shot. It's not exactly sophisticated, is it? 
He could have just let us in. Let's go. Anyway, it worked. Of course. But it wasn't cool. Now you can let me speak, okay? That guy there. Now he is cool. I can see that from here. That must be this Francois. Now pay attention and just see how well I get on with the guy. I'm quite relaxed. In 10 minutes time, that guy and me will be best mates, okay? Okay, I'm paying attention. Whoa, don't make me jump like that. Quite relaxed. Yes, I am. So what do you want? Say that. Although I admit it's somewhat overrated. So, uh, yeah, you're kind of right in principle. It's just that I think it's well, kind of cool. If well, maybe not quite as cool as here. Yeah. Well, hey, who let you talk about yeah. The door was open. Where's Gerard? Gone to the loo. Seem to be a bit urgent. Can you get a drink here, or is everything just for decoration? You've got a uh, old man. I'd like to do. Okay. So, for a moment, I thought you were totally cops of the day. No, no, my heart, my kid, is totally okay. You just have to do this cool jean style bitch. Gotcha. So, what I wanted to say was, Leave it, Mike. Nice disco you've got here. Disco? Cool. Only you're here a bit too early. Let her go. In three or four hours, it'll be warped. <laughs> we will be in bed by then. Yeah, me too. Bertrand carries on for me. We need our sleep at our age. This has to be a bad dream. How long have you been doing this? Where you come from? From Kalinki, the most beautiful town in the world. It was back then. How did you get out? With all my limbs still attached, luckily for me, I got on one of the last days. Just me. Maybe I saw one of the passengers. There was six. Yeah, well, you can't 
maintain a state like that. Imenge could, and he was willing to destroy it all when he failed. To him, it wasn't about people. It was about an idea. That's not an idea. That's madness. Nothing more. Of course. That's why I got out. I didn't want to die for the ideas of a man. It's not the same. We, we had your blood with some parties in the Catholic. I did it. By unusually fire and hate. Then, we were in the Catholic to serve the enemy. We saw some crucifixion. Let's say we just want to go for a bit of a wander about in the catacombs. You're not planning anything illegal. What gives you that idea? Then I'm happy. Yeah, the publicly available maps are a bit Mickey Mouse. And we thought that... Ah, oh, you thought. You could help. about any of that. We're only looking for um, a few roots. Where to then, if I might ask? Business secret? Come on, let's have a look at it. Okay. Cool, man. You, you just walked in here or what? Calm down, man. Just be glad you got a decent boss. Hang on. What have you been up to in there, you dirty snoopers? 
Ask your boss. And better keep your hands off the pills in future. They seem to have something of a laxative effect. Come on, Mike, we need to go. I'd rather not be here if they come back again. Hey, you stay right there, you tossers! Now, you heroes, there you are. We'd better get out of here. Mike, you did photograph the map, didn't you? Yes, of course I did. Our Mike's gone rather quiet all of a sudden, hasn't he? But it's also the pits being so uncool. Idiot. Heck, you two really can't be left on your own, can you? Come on, then. Let's go and look at these catacombs again. This time with a map. So, what have we got here? Hey, you! Jeez, you look like a real advert for steroids, my friend. You what? No offense, they're definitely all real muscles. You're looking for trouble, huh? As if. No, I'm just looking for a few friends of mine. Friends? Yes, a little nerd with a black van. Maybe got some company with them. They in there? So they're your friends then? Yeah, sure. We're the very best of pals. Are they inside? Hey, can I go have a quick look? You know what, Pa? If those are your best friends, then you can give them something from me. Aha. Uh -huh. And what would that be? <laughs> 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 Okay, we going in? You got your torch? Of course. Oh, wait. Okay, I've got everything. Right then, let's go. I can work out how to use it. The map is rather confusing, but where there's a will... Dad's old hiking compass. I nicked it from him.
the plan, the museum's foundations are behind this rock wall. <sighs> That's granite. That'll take some getting through. Our old maglite. Wow, there's enough grenades here for a whole regiment. Okay, first let's get out of here. Okay, we're all set then. Here's the plan. On the 14th of July, just before 10 p.m., Mike's going to drop us off just in front of the catacombs. We go in and we split up. I go as far as the rock wall and drill the holes. Bernard puts together a couple of explosive charges in the resistance camp. Then he brings me the explosives and we mine the rock wall. After that, he goes back and joins Mike in the car and then you drive off. Mike parks himself with the van in front of the museum, logs into the security system and watches the fireworks. Then we wait for the climax of the firework display. The pressure sensors are being turned off for that. When it gets to that point, Mike gives us the signal and we set off the charges. I go in and sneak up to the exhibition space. Mike helps me with the lasers and Bernard distracts the guard with a firecracker charge. In the meantime, I swap over the pictures and whiz off straight back into the catacombs. Then I meet you two guys back outside the catacombs exit and then off we go. And that's it. Any questions? The picture. Who's getting the picture from London? I could. I'm doing that. Uh-huh. Hmm. Still got to go into town. Okay, Bernard. Then you do it. You've still got an appointment in London anyway, haven't you? He has? With who then? With his past. Uh -huh. All right then. That's everything. We'll do it in five days' time. Come on. Ridiculous, these prices. Oh, looks wonderful, but stinks to high heaven. Where is that dickhead now? He'll come. He was going to be back here at four. Now it's almost nine. Perhaps he got held up. If he doesn't get back in the next half an hour, then... Then what? Bernard! Oh, thank God. You finally made it. What took you so long? Sorry. There were a couple of problems. Oh? What kind of problems? I think someone has been in the loft. What? Oh, great. What makes you think that? It's just little things. A photo had moved. The newspaper, too. Is anything missing? I didn't notice anything. Hmm. Sounds like one of McBride's stories. Perhaps his paranoid ramblings are contagious. But the question is, what if it's true? If it was the police, they would have waited for us. Then Bernie wouldn't be here now. That's all well and good, but what now? We do what we plan to do. Then we'll go back and have a look at the loft together. Agreed? Agreed.
Everybody out. Don't forget your stuff. Got everything? Best of luck, Mike. You too. Best of luck. Hmm. We'll hear each other soon. Check your phone now. You got a signal? I have. Okay. I'm going to the camp now. Call if something happens. Good luck. Here is the entry point. I have to figure out the best places to drill. I'd better put the torch down, then my hands will be free. Here sounds good. to be enough. I'm there. I'm going to start with the grenades now. Mike, what's happening with the fireworks? Hasn't started yet. Just quiet. There seems to be quite a few people about. All the better. Completely unusable. Hmm. That still looks quite sturdy. The boxes seem to be in good shape. The vice still works. Completely unusable. Just the thing I need. Grenades. I'll take one of them with me. The boxes seem to be in good shape. The vice still works. opened up. Just a bit rusty, otherwise they're perfect. So the whole thing again two more times. Catherine, the explosive's ready. I'm coming to you. Right then, let's go. Voila. So, the holes are ready. Get going, people, quick. The fireworks are just beginning. Damn it! Can you hear? Can you hear the music? I'm coming right now, Captain. We don't have that much time. I know, but jogging with an explosive device is a bad idea. Just three minutes, people. Damn, it's getting tight. Okay, ready. 
Here are the detonators. The fuse is enough for 20 seconds. You getting there? 1 minute 30. It's getting exciting, folks. Are you ready there? Ready. Then I'm out of here. Good luck. 30 seconds, Catherine. Get ready. I just hope that the ceiling holds. It has to. I haven't married you yet. What? 10 seconds. You haven't what? Five, four, three, two, one. Now! My God, that is so cool. If only you could see it. Everything quiet in the museum. How's it looking your end, Catherine? Catherine. Hey, Catherine. That's not funny, okay? No, it's really not at all funny. Oh, God! You really gave me a fright there. I'm going in there now. Okay, I'm hooking up with the computer now. Mike, what's the story with the lasers? I'm thinking about it. Give me a minute. Hurry up. I'm not crazy about getting caught by the night security guy. Yeah, okay. I'm not a magician. Okay, Bernard, Catherine's done, your turn. A window. Fuse is lit. Now, quick. Let's see if I can hit it. There he is, George Washington. Catacombs. I'm back at the explosion site. Mikey, I'll see you shortly at the catacombs. Come on, come on! Get in and let's get out of here! Okay, drive! No! The cops are over there! No! Oh. Shit! Ha! They're not after us. Of course, they're going to the museum. Well, officers, best of luck with your search. Whew, that was close. You've got some nerve. I just make like I have. I was bricking it. You're the greatest, guys. Okay then, to London, please. You see, no special task force. At least not out here. Don't worry, there's no one there. What is it? Are you coming? You go first. You can't be serious, guys. 
All right. I'm going in. Hello, officers. You see? No one there. Everything's fine. Welcome home. I don't know. Something's strange here. Nonsense. Everything's as it should be. We'll have a closer look in a minute. No, not then. Now. Well, everything looks completely normal in my room. There was no one here. You know what we're gonna do now? We're gonna have a drink. We've done it again, people. No one will ever be able to replicate what we've done. Where are you? Bernard? Mike? I'm here. What's wrong? Catherine, someone was here. Why? What's missing? The business card from my monitor. It was from my boss at Megabase. Anything else? Come on, you probably lost it. Just have a look at the state of this place. No, I haven't lost it. It was taped to the monitor right here since I've been working there, always. No one's going to come in here and steal a business card. Perhaps something else is missing. Well, nothing of mine is missing. You're mistaken. Check again. And what about Bernie? Bernard? Is anything missing from your room? Bernard! Oh, where's he got to this time? Bernard? Where is he? Wait a minute. Of course there are things missing. His luggage isn't here. What the? That can't be. Perhaps... Uh, perhaps he's just in town again. And he needed to take his bags with him. This can't be true. You can see it, can't you? I'm gonna call him. Not with your mobile. Use the phone downstairs. We should play it safe from now on. You're right. No new messages. Pick it up. Hello, this is Bernard de Velo's mailbox. Leave your message after the tune. Thank you for calling. Bernard, this is Catherine. Bernard, please call back immediately. Call back and tell me that it's not true. He won't call. I can't believe it. That just can't be true. We'll wait. He'll get in touch. It's almost 2.30. I know what time it is. Catherine, he won't call back. He's done a number on us. Look at this. The paper. I don't want to read the paper now. Bernie definitely did read it. It says here that the people we were supporting are broke. They didn't get any money. Bernard kept it for himself. That's why he's gone. His cover would have been blown today. What a slimy creep. There must be an explanation for this. There's another article on page one. Have you seen it? Brown, the Prime Minister, is dead. All of a sudden, just like Henston. You're usually the first one to celebrate that kind of thing. The painting in the London Modern was from his office in Downing Street, Catherine. Go on. What does that mean? There's something not quite right. You're seeing ghosts, Mike. What's wrong with you all? McBride paranoid. You too. Bernard's betrayed us. Have you all gone mad? Why are we doing all of this? You tell me. We're stopping. Now. Today. We've got an appointment with your friend soon. I know. We'll do that, and then that's it. <sighs> Perhaps you should try calling Bernie again. No. Get the stuff. It's almost three. We're gonna finish this off.
telephone. Oh, God. Thank God for that. I'll get it. Bernard, my God, finally. We thought... Catherine, this is your father. I'm so happy I finally reached you. Why didn't you call me back? What do you want, Dad? Catherine, listen to me. I think something dreadful has happened. You're right there. Now stop that. It's important. I sold something some years ago. I regret it now. And you need to know about it. Oh, right. Can we meet? I, I can't speak freely on the phone. I'm not interested in your business, Dad. If you earn money out of people killing each other, then you have to live with that. Catherine, just one question. Are you caught up in something illegal? Less so than you. So you are. For God's sake, who are you involved with? You must tell me. I have to go, Dad. Catherine, don't hang up. Don't scream at me. Now listen to me. It's for your own good. I'm hanging up now. Catherine! Bye. What the hell was that? Let's go. That's him again. Are you gonna let it ring? He can talk to the answer phone. Come on now. Catherine, this is Dad. I think you're in great danger. I have influential friends, and you need them now. You're involved in something bad. And I... I fear that it's partly my fault. Catherine, pick up the phone immediately. still there. I have to get to the Musée de Paris immediately. I'm sorry, monsieur. We are closed today. Police investigation. I know. Jack Stern, International Police, Washington. The incidents here might have something to do with the case that I'm working on. I'd like to have a look around, and I have a couple of questions for you. Monsieur, I'm not sure if I can let you in here. Uh, the criminal investigators expressly forbid... Okay, listen, Mr... Duval. Cédric Duval. Mr. Duval, it's really quite urgent. I'll take full responsibility. Please let me in. All right, uh, come in. So that's the museum. How long have you worked here? For 30 years. That's a long time. Were you on yesterday? Yes, but I wasn't doing nights. However, I was on the premises. I was watching the fireworks. And there was nothing missing from the museum? Not one tiny thing. Well, except for the wall in the basement, of course. I'd like to take a look at that. Of course. Come with me. Aha. So this is where they got in. Did you know that the catacombs are right next to the museum? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, that was known. They discovered that during the building work. Oh. Yes, the diggers broke through into the catacombs. But of course, it was never made public. Hmm. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? How do you mean? Any particular thing happen? Building work, suspicious or maybe especially curious visitors? No, not really. Or, uh, just a minute. Uh, there was a young woman here a week ago. 
She was asking about the basement, when it was built, and so on. A young woman? Was she on her own? I didn't see anyone. How come the alarm didn't go off with the explosion? Uh, parts of the alarm system had been shut down because of the fireworks. The air pressure sensors are much too sensitive for that kind of disturbance. Did anybody know about that? No. The staff, of course. Although... Uh... Yes? Ah, uh, no. Nothing. What then, although? Come on, it might be important. No, no, I, I'm mistaken. You discussed this with someone? Isn't that the case? Come on, who was it? I mentioned it to a tourist. Uh, it slipped out when we were discussing the fireworks. What did he look like? About uh, 40, slim, a bit of a lived-in face. Spoke with an accent, uh, maybe Belgian. I knew it. Okay, thank you, Cedric. You've helped me a lot. Come on, uh, let's go back up. I ought to take a closer look around here. I'm more of a U.S. cavalry man myself. Chief, this is Jack. Ah, nice to hear from you, Jack. Do you read the papers? Yes, Chief, that's why I'm calling. What the hell is going on? The goddamn British Prime Minister is dead, in London. And who's got no results? Who hasn't even got any leads? Who is in goddamn Paris instead of London and doesn't even call in for over a week? You, Jack, you! Chief, let me... I won't let you do anything anymore, Jack. Chief, I was in hospital. I got beaten up. I was unconscious for three days and was in intensive care for two days after that. Ah, how did that happen? Well, how that kind of thing always happens. I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, really? Not even a suspect? No, sir. But it would appear you're better now. Good. I'm removing you from the case. Frazier is taking over. Chief, please, just listen to me first. I told you about this trio. They were here and are probably back in London now. I'm absolutely certain that those three have something to do with these deaths. Let me just go back to London and close off the case. No, I've got no idea what you're investigating, Jack. But I do know one thing. You're stopping it right now. You're going back to London and handing over your files to Fraser. 
Frazier is an idiot. That might be true, but at least he's an efficient idiot. When's he coming? He'll be at the airport in 24 hours. Fine. Will you do me one last favor? What, then? Keep on sending me the cell phone data from Mensforth. If it makes you happy. Now, get your butt to London. Don't get into any fights on the way. I want to know as soon as you're there. Yes, Chief. No problem. Oh, great. Hello, Jack. Tell me, where are you? In Paris. What the hell are you doing in Paris? Did you read the papers? <sighs> yes. What is it, Jordan? The results from the analysis are back. Oh, yes. And? Shoot. Well, Jack, unfortunately, there's nothing spectacular to report. Just as I expected. All the guys could find were some minute traces of polyvinyl alcohol, less than the size of a pinhead. Polyvinyl alcohol? What the hell's that? It's a water-soluble synthetic material. It's used in films. It was probably residue from the packing material. The painting had been transported recently. You don't have anything else? I'm sorry. We've now got more important things to do, as I'm sure you can imagine. I'm sure you do, too. I'm being replaced by a colleague in 24 hours. Yes. Well, I thought that might happen. But perhaps it's for the best. Yeah. Perhaps. I'm on my way back to London. I'll see you there. All right. See you. My work phone. Okay. Okay. Get it over and done with. And don't take too long. There he is. See you soon. Nice time in Paris. I'd say so. A beautiful city, isn't it? The city of love. Isn't that what you say here? And I see you brought me back a souvenir. May I? Just a second. Yes? Mr. Adila, I have a couple of questions to ask you. Of course you do. I would be surprised if you didn't. Brown, the Prime Minister, died yesterday. Yes, I read about that. Regrettable. He had four children and a beautiful wife. He also lent a painting out to the London Modern. The painting that you now have. MP Henston had also lent out a painting. Yes, that really is a curious coincidence. It certainly is. It makes me wonder whether it would be right to give you this painting. If it would be right, that's an interesting question. You're a brave young woman, Miss Hope. You have pledged your life to the idea of doing the right thing. That is your promise to yourself. Are you doing the right thing now, Miss Hope? I'm doing what is necessary. Then we have the same motives. I don't believe that. Mr. Odila, we don't work for you anymore. We're not working at all anymore. Whatever it is you are doing, it's neither right nor necessary. It's just abhorrent. You're completely right, Miss Hope. You don't work for me anymore. You're not working at all anymore. There is only one person of worth to us in your naive little revolutionary group. And who is that, in your opinion? It's certainly not you, Miss Hope. 
My country does not need your services anymore. Today is your last day. Enjoy the sunset. Oh, hell! Catherine! My god, what the hell was that? The guy wanted to kill us, I don't believe it. Robert's gone. Oh no, there's been some kind of scuffle here, look at the chaos. This can't be for real. Those scumbags. Do you think he's dead? No, you heard what Adela said, they need him. Perhaps he's been arrested. They've kidnapped him. We've got to get out of here now, Catherine. Either Odila or the police will be here in five minutes. That's quite right. Nice and calm now, guys. A little bit on edge now. Oh no! You always meet twice. You know each other or what? That's the guy from the jetty by the museum. Put more precisely, it's the guy from the police, and he has a few questions that need answering. A few dozen questions, in fact. You're under arrest, both of you. What's the charge? Well, let's just start with break-in, causing an explosion, forgery of vehicle registration plates, fraud, and misleading the authorities. And then we'll see if we can't throw in accessory to murder, or even murder itself. Now let me inform you of your rights. You have the right to remain silent. You too. That's what I call timing. Hey, everything all right? We ought to ask you that. Now speak. Where have you been? Where were you? Where's the money? Listen, guys. You idiot! You grassed us up to the police! No, I didn't. Of course you did! You snitched us up to this pig here! And they gave you safe conduct for it! No! Then what? You just stole from us, and then disappeared before it got dangerous? Guys, we've got to get out of here. Now. We? There is no we anymore, you pillock! You're a snitch! I'm sick of the sight of you! Is that what you think too, Catherine? You've caused enough damage. Go. Go where you were planning to go. No one needs you here anymore. Yes. You need me. And McBride needs us. I... I know that I... cock things up. Oh yeah? I'm looking forward to hearing this. Mike. Catherine. Let's go. Now. We've got to get to the airport. Immediately. Without me. We haven't even got a car anymore, you idiot. We can't go back to the London Eye. We can't go anywhere. Let's take the cop's car. Come on now. Damn. struggle here. There's been some kind of struggle here. What a mess. Oh, God. There's been some kind of struggle here.
well burning. Go ahead. Okay, listen. I've got caught up in something really bad. I... I've done a couple of jobs on the side with... Mr. Odila. Jobs? And what kind of jobs were they? He wanted access to Robert's studio. A duplicate key. And you got him one. You can't be serious. He promised to take care of my debts. He knew everything about me. Debts? Who do you owe? You two. What do you mean, us two? Wait, you gambled the money away? I knew it! I've got to go into town. What kind of poor sod are you? I'm sorry. I swear I didn't want to spend the money. I... I just wanted... to double it. And keep the winnings. <sighs> what did Odila want with the key? He didn't tell me. But he assured me that nothing would happen to Robert. And that he wouldn't notice a thing. I, I thought it had something to do with Robert's work. He's got a load of excellent copies lying around. I thought they might be after one of those. Oh, great. And this morning you realized that everything was going to leak out, so you just disappeared. With our money. I haven't received a penny from Odila. He conned us. All of us. Oh, boo-hoo. And? Why did you come back? I heard Catherine's call. I was already at the airport, but I... I just couldn't do it. All of a sudden? Yeah, all of a sudden. I'm sorry. Should I go? As far as I'm concerned, you should never have come back. No, you stay. Robert has been kidnapped and he's got you to thank for that. Now you've got more debts. You owe it to us to get him out of there. I know. I blame myself. I'm not going anywhere with that prat. This cop? Have we got you to thank for him too? Have you done business with him as well? No. <laughs> and why should we believe that? It's the truth. I can't tell you anything else. Mike, can you please go through all the papers that Snooper's got in the back of his car? If he was investigating us, then he might also have some clues that could lead us to Robert. And the thing with Bernard? Is it just gonna hang in the air like this? We need all the information about this dictator we can get. Now. Come on, Mike. All right, then. But don't go thinking that's the end of it. You prat. Have a look at this. Henston and Brown were both particularly outspoken with regards to the economic sanctions against Cyrenella. Brown's vote in the Security Council was the direct cause of the blockade. And Henston had significantly supported the counter-movement in the Civil War. Dictator Elengi had to flee. He's now the president of an exiled government on a mini island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It says that he promised the Western leaders who had forced him from his country a painful death. Here, I found this diplomatic passport on Odila, Provisional Republic of Surinawa. That's where they'll take Robert. Where is this island exactly? In the middle of nowhere, near the Society Islands, far off in the Pacific Ocean. They haven't even got an airport. Find out how we can get there, Mike. You've got half an hour. And get hold of the most detailed map you can. We've got no money, Catherine. Yes, we've got money. Isn't that right, Bernard? Okay. I'll see what I can do. Okay, guys, I've got it. The nearest airport is on Tahiti. From there, you have to take a ship or a boat. I've also found a map of the island. Quite secure. This Alengi is certainly a bit paranoid. When's the next flight? If we hurry, we'll make the check-in for the night flight. In ten minutes. Oh my god. Only pack the most necessary things. We'll have to buy the rest when we're there. We've got enough money. You keep your mouth shut. And when we're there, what's the plan? We haven't got time for a plan, Mike. When the cop wakes up again, he'll start looking for us right away. We fly over there. I'll board the ship as a tourist and look for Robert. You two will stay on Tahiti in the meantime and make a plan. That sounds great. We've got no choice. We've got to improvise. Come on. Here we are then. A real paradise. Guys? Yeah. I'm there now. I'm going to have to shut down for a while. I'll be back in touch as soon as it's possible. Okay. 
Watch out for yourself. It looks kind of romantic, but those are slums. Halt! Immigration control, your passport, please. Hi, officer. It's really fabulous here. Your passport, please, madam. Yep, I've got it. Thank you. Catherine, Tracy, Hope. Right in front of you. You can call me Tracy. Empty your pockets. Oh, I don't have much with me. Only my mobile, the passport, and a bit of cash. I'm only making a bit of a detour over here, you know. I really live in Tahiti. You are traveling alone? Uh, yes, of course. How long are you staying? Well, perhaps two or three days. Depends how much I like it here. I hope not everyone here is as unfriendly as you. Madame, you are a British citizen. Are you aware about the diplomatic situation between your country and mine? To be honest, I'm not all that up on things. Is there a bit of a problem? Great Britain is an enemy state. Visits from its citizens are undesirable. Our president, Rayla Elengi, is a benevolent man, and he allows visitors from Western states to stay for a maximum of three days. If you haven't left our territory by the time that period elapses, then you'll be taken into custody pending deportation. You may not move about the island during the curfew. Photography and filming is forbidden. If you break the law, then you run the risk of... Custody pending deportation? I see we understand each other. Do you have any questions? No. Everything's quite clear. Oh, I did have a question. When does the curfew begin? At 2200 on the dot. I think that's everything then. Of course. A checkpoint. on every corner. I'd rather avoid him. Hmm. That's not going to be much of a stroll. Doesn't look too inviting. It's closed. As long as the soldier's there, I can forget about it. Step back! I'm not doing anything. Step back! Or I'll have to arrest you. Okay, okay, no problem. That better? Who does this property belong to? It's certainly very imposing. Mm. You're not especially talkative, are you? Okay then, I'll go. No way through there. Hmm. Like in London, everything under surveillance 24-7. Mike? Oi, you still breathing? Yes? This isn't a joke, all this. I've just had my first police interrogation. Yeah, great. What did they want? Immigration formalities. As an English woman, I'm not exactly a guest of honor. Yeah, that was to be expected. Did they notice anything? No. Everything's okay for now. I can only hope that I don't meet that Odila here. The island is really tiny. They won't be reckoning on us coming to them. I'm going to take a look around. I'll give you a shout later. Okay. Eerie. And then the 
this reek of petrol. The pump is pretty close to the watchtower. Nice and gloomy. Nice and gloomy. Filled to the brim with petrol. Hey, you there, young lady. What is it? What are you still doing on the streets? Is it curfew already? In 20 minutes, you have accommodation. I... I'm sleeping on the beach this evening, if that's allowed. It's not. Curfew means you have to stay in your house. If you don't have anywhere to stay, I'll lock you up. Oh, I understand. Uh, where uh, could I find accommodation quickly then? Most of the fishermen have guest rooms. I advise you to get on with it right away. Good evening, Captain. Surely there isn't a problem with this pretty foreign girl. She does not have accommodation. Oh, my, my. Then we have to help the poor girl. I can't allow such a charming person to spend the night in a green police station, Captain. Hmm? Thanks very much, but I'm sorting myself out. If I can do it in time for the curfew. Oh, yes, the curfew. You can't go blaming the good Captain Pakele about that. But he is very strict about it. Pakele, don't be a beast and give the girl some leeway, will you? Hmm? Yes, sir. Good night, Captain. Good night, young lady. Maybe we'll meet again. You can hardly not around here, it seems. And thank you, Mr. He's nice. Who was that? Now just make sure you find somewhere to stay. Hi. Do you speak my language? Yes, a little. You are from England, young lady. Correct. You can tell then. Well, one tries. I spent 15 years working on Ascension, you know? That's full of America. Yes, I heard. It's a military base, isn't it? What did you do there? Oh, I helped to mine the inshore waters. Mm, that's a pretty dangerous job. Uh, you get used to it. Obviously, if you step on one, then it gets unpleasant. How did you get that job? I'm a fisherman, and the fishermen know the waters around here. You know all about the channels and the shallows. You can tell by the color of the water whether or not you can take a boat somewhere. Therefore, you also know the route that an enemy boat might take. And that's where you lay the mines. The Americans knew that. They recruited lots of fishermen from a radius of around a hundred miles. And they were simply allowed to do that? Yeah. At that time, these islands were still free. We could go where we wanted at that time. And now? You can't get away now? You don't get many people coming here these days. And even fewer get away again. When Elenge took over the islands, the first thing he did was mine the local waters. But that wouldn't be able to stop someone like you. No, of course not. I don't understand that. Why do you stay? Don't you want to get away? No, I don't. No way. These islands are my home. But you just said... Look, child, a person isn't free if they have to flee their home. You are free when you can leave and also come back again. Tell me about Elenge. Take a look around. See the mines, the watchtowers, the soldiers. That tells you everything about Alengi. How did he take over these islands? Didn't anyone defend them? Yes, of course. The young ones and the brave, they fought. And so we became an island of cowards and old folks. You mean they're all... Alengi is a cultivated man, young lady. He had all their stomachs cut open and painted pictures with their blood. He loves art, you know. He did what? That's not true. 
in his palace. He has a gallery with rust red walls. He's a very cultivated man. He's a monster. Tell me more about Elengi. I can tell you a story. Four years ago, I caught a fish, a shark. It was a very weak animal, already lost all its strength, an easy catch. I cut off its fins and sold them to a tourist. When I gutted the shark, I found a small poisonous fish in its stomach. The tourist became fatally ill. I sat in hospital at his bedside. I knew that he wasn't going to survive. Then Elenge came into the hospital. He heard about the case. He watched the death struggle all night long. And in the morning, when the man was dead, he said, that's how the apparently strong die, killed by the apparently weak. He had the dead Briton painted. The picture is hanging in his palace. That's gruesome. And are you going to go out fishing now? Yes, of course I am. Every morning, an hour before sunrise. Could I come with you? Oh, no, little lady. That wouldn't work. Why not, then? I know the way through the mines. If you got to know it, then we'd both end up getting lynched for it. Oh, I understand. Listen, Alfred. I've got another question. I'm a little uncomfortable asking. You need somewhere to stay, don't you? It'll be curfew any time now, and you can't stay here on the beach. Uh, yes, exactly. Perhaps you know someone. You can stay at my place. Oh, that's really nice of you. I'll pay you, of course. Wait, I can give you... Keep your money. Better give it to a good cause instead. I think I can promise you that. You have to go. Just a minute. I still have to make a phone call. Then I'll go on ahead. Third house up the street, on the right. I'll find it. And then you'll have to tell me more. speak to Mike first, urgently. Not here. That Pekeli would hear everything. so easy. None of the tubs we've seen so far will even get us to the next boy. How's it going for you? You found anything out yet? Mike, this Elengi is a total nutter. I've been talking to a fisherman. He's told me some real horror stories. The waters around the island are mined. You won't get through so easily. That doesn't sound so good. Do you know what kind of mines they are? Not yet. I'll try and find out, though. Mike? Yeah? It all feels a bit weird here to me. The island looks like a paradise, but the regime is hellish. Do you think the McBride is still alive then? I'm not so sure anymore. Do you want to get out? I can't give up that quickly. That's your decision. No, it's about doing the right thing, isn't it? Huh. Well, which one of us knows what that is? How are you getting on with Bernard? How should we be getting on? We don't talk much. Mike, you have to. I don't have to do anything. He's a pig. Stop it. How is anything supposed to get changed in this world if we three can't even get on with each other? How's the world supposed to change if one of the three of us is happy to leave things as they are? He made a mistake, Mike. Yeah, of course he did. Maybe this Elenki has just made a mistake too. That's not the same thing, and you know it. Well, sure it's the same. Maybe it's time you admitted that to yourself. Should we just quit this job? It's the last one we're doing anyway. You say that like we've lost already. Have you already thought about what we're going to do? Ever get away from you. Here's Bernie. We'll 
talk again tomorrow, okay? So, madame, if you're not going to disappear immediately back to your accommodation. Okay, okay. I'm on my way. I hope so. Thank you, Alfred. You really are a treasure. It was a very informative evening. I hope you find your friend. If you need anything while you are here, come to me at any time. And remember what I told you about the mines. Be careful. Yes, of course. I have my boys. They'll look after me. I have to go now. See you again later, perhaps. I'd rather avoid him. any time. Fill to the brim with petrol. It smells particularly strongly here. soon as possible. And I already am aware. Now! That stinky petrol, it's unbearable and highly inflammable. If that thing went up, it'd make some really pretty fireworks. How could you ignite it? Maybe Alfred can help me, and I'll give Mike a call tonight. Whom 
because he has a the pretty English girl. Come here a minute. Let's have a little chat. Look, my savior from yesterday. Good evening. So, how are you? Do you go for a walk every evening? I do. My doctor has recommended it. The old bones need a little exercise. Eh? And you? Are you having a nice time here with us? Did everything go okay with the accommodation? Yes, everything's fine. It's really interesting here, and the beach is wonderful. Only with all of the soldiers, it's a bit unnerving. Well, yes, I know. I don't especially like the military. All the shouting orders, the dreary uniforms, the marching. Soldiers are simply boring. <laughs> but we need them. History has taught us that much. Oh, you've got some nerve. Just watch out that those over there don't give you any trouble. I don't think so, little girl. Tell me, what brings you here? A young girl here from England on her own? That's brave. Unusual. Oh, well, you know, I just kind of set off. Rather spontaneous. I'm uh, looking for something, you could say. Ah, my word. Looking for something. Hmm, aren't we all? And what are you looking for then? For knowledge? Recognition? Friends? Life's big goal? A bit of each, I guess. Yes, I can understand that. That's what bonds us. What do you do in England? Study? I've already done that. Art and art history. Oh, well then. You must certainly have some excellent job prospects. Exactly. There's nothing in my way for a successful career in the industry. Ah, you're young. You've got plans for sure. What are you going to do with all the study? What are you going to do with your life? Yes, well, I still have to find that out. And you, what do you do? You seem to be a man who commands some respect here. You know what, little lady? I'd very much like to show you. My house isn't far from here. Would you like to visit? I'm inviting you to dine with me. Oh, that's really nice of you, but um, I don't know if... Uh... Please, you can rest assured that I'm just a harmless old fool who would just like to chat and show off his house. <laughs> well then, that makes the offer irresistible. Come on then. Here we are. That's your house? My modest abode. Please. Does that mean... Come, come. We can chat more while we eat. That's overwhelming. But it's way cool. It's got a cable car. Your architect really went to town. Come, my dear. We have to take the cable car. It does sway a little. Like it? Very much. It's just amazing. Can I have a look around? But of course. Please, ask me if you want to know anything. I'm going to sit a while. Where do these stairs go to? Oh, that's the access to my landing pad. I have a helicopter, you know. Your very own helicopter? Now that's cool. In case you need to leave quickly, then? Yes, it is. In my position, that can happen faster than you think. You still haven't told me what you do. You guessed already? Or possibly not? You... You're Rayla Alenghi. This Republic's president. Hmm. Does that disturb you? No, not really. Should it? No, as long as we're not enemies. 
Ah, oh, now that sounds rather sinister. You have a lot of enemies, don't you? Oh yes, a lot. My life has always been defined by struggle. And don't you want that to stop? Yes, I would like it to stop. But I didn't go looking for my enemies. They came looking for me. If I want peace from them, I not only have to fight them, I have to win. This map here, does it show the island? Yes, precisely. Although it's one of the oldest maps, it's also one of the best. Strange, isn't it? And these little symbols, they look like they've been drawn in at a later date. You're very curious, little Tracy. <laughs> That's what my ex-boyfriend always used to say. And what did you reply? Well, that I'm just interested. Interesting. Of course. I've just had the minefield added to the map. The one we had laid around the island. It would be rather stupid if I had to leave the island by sea and didn't know myself where I should be sailing. That's true. So why did you have everywhere mined here? Oh, yes. Well, we didn't want to wake up one morning to find a whole British or American army standing on the beach. And what would they want? There really isn't much here. <laughs> You're very amusing. You're also correct. If I wasn't here, then there wouldn't be anything at all. And there are people that really do wish for that. Do you live in fear of that? Of course I know fear. Not to know fear is to be an idiot. Bravery is recognizing your fear and knowing how to tame it. I've already heard that. Most definitely. The advantages of a humanistic European education. I can't just simply run off. He's invited me. So this goes up to the platform. So this goes up to the platform. This curtain is beautiful. What's behind it? Can I look? After we've eaten, perhaps. Ooh, a secret, yes? Exactly that. The excitement's unbearable already. Be patient. So, have you seen enough, little Trissy? Honestly, I could look around here for hours on end. I like you. Your interest is genuine. You don't come across that so often. Oh, thank you. The compliment needn't make you feel uncomfortable. You must surely be hungry, hmm? I'm starving. I didn't think you were going to ask again. Oh dear, I really am a monster. <laughs> Come, let's sit at the table and I'll have something brought to us. was good. You must pass my compliments on to the chef. The black dumplings, what were they made from? You like them? Mmm, and how? From scarab beetles. Delicious, yes? Mm. Nonsense. <laughs> they were truffles. <laughs> you really must have a terrible picture of me. Whew, you gave me a bit of shock there. You thought I'd do that? Uh, no. Uh, yes. Oh, I don't know. I hardly know you. What do you know about me, little Tracy? I have the feeling it's more than you're telling. What makes you think that? I feel it. Are you afraid of me? 
No. A little, perhaps. You've read where I come from. You know what this Republic here is about. Well, yes. I read a few things before I came out here. And... Do you believe what you've read about me? I'm not sure. Then ask. Ask away and I'll answer all your questions. Everyone. I did read that you were an art collector. Yes, I am. But I hardly see any pictures in your house. <laughs> You're a good observer. There are pictures in this house. I've only been collecting for a few years, but my collection is unique. So how do you collect? Particular periods? Particular artists? Oh, first of all, I collected without any kind of system. Before the coup took place in our country, my only criterion was that a picture should please me. That's a good principle. That it is. But then I became more selective. Uh-huh. And like how? Did you know that in our country, we believe that every picture has a soul? And not only the one that you might see of the person in the picture, but also a soul that belongs to the owner of the picture itself. There is always a spiritual connection between the picture and its owner. That's a very beautiful concept, and not so far removed from one I have myself. Once upon a time, I never really paid much heed to this belief. I used to find pictures either beautiful or ugly. It was a superficial way of looking at them. And now? And now, I collect the ones which give me the deepest gratification. Do you understand that? I don't know if I do exactly. Let's leave it at that. These are strong feelings I'm talking about. Maybe even quite questionable ones. I wouldn't like to scare you. Look, now I'm scaring you again. About your country, the old Republic of Surinawa. Yes. What happened there? I mean, I have read a little of the history and... I play a somewhat inglorious role. Well, yes. Yes, I know. History is always written by the victors. That is the heart of the imperialist ideology. And how does your version read? Surinawa was always a very proud country. British colonial rule almost ruined it. The British plundered our minds, subjugated our people. They could hardly expect that there would be no revolt. When we became independent, the natural resources became ours once more. Precious metals, uranium, and ores gave us back our prosperity, and our republic became a rising African state. But then the colonial rulers returned, only this time in the form of mining corporations. This could have been the second expropriation, and I was not going to allow it. We defended our land with an iron fist against not only the invaders, but also against the many traitors and collaborators within our midst. You had them killed. We did what was necessary. We had the choice to either fight or suffer servitude for a second time. You say that what you did was necessary. Do you also think that it was right? What's necessary is also right. And what's right becomes necessary. Perhaps. Principles, my little Tracy, are important. Things that are necessary and right must also be done with severity and anger. And if it has to be so, with hate also, unrelenting and without pity, with resolve and burning with hatred, that's how we have to fight, in the service of truth and justice. That sounds quite terrible. The truth can be brutal and also painful. You can't always have it both ways, as many Europeans love to think. Sometimes the only option is to have one or the other, to decide for one thing and let the other thing go. You're not saying anything anymore, Tracy. 
I'm scaring you, and I don't want to do that. I don't know what to say. Because it sounds so awful? No, not because of that. But because you sound like you could be right. All of us have to decide. You, me, all of us. Life doesn't wait for us. It comes at us. And we have to decide. Can I ask you something else? But of course. Why did you invite me here? There are two answers. I don't like eating alone. That's one. I enjoy company. It's nice to have someone around. So you're always alone then? You don't have a wife or any children? I'm a warrior, Tracy. But that doesn't mean... Yes, it does. I once had a wife. Yes, and a daughter. Where are they both now? My wife left me after the government takeover. She found my methods unacceptable. She was weak. The fact that she went wasn't a loss to me. It was the right thing. And your daughter? I don't know where she's living. She turned against me. Many years ago now. I don't have a daughter anymore. You understand? Yes. I understand that completely. It's not such a rare thing. I have a business partner. He has an armaments business. The situation is just the same with his daughter. She's become a criminal and hates him with a passion. He's an arms manufacturer? Perhaps that's why. Yes, that's quite possible. What do you say to him? I tell him to forget her. Yes, maybe that's the only option. I have to think about all this. I'm tired. Would you like to remain my guest for this evening? I don't know if that really... Would be right? But yes, don't think about it. You can sleep in my daughter's room. I thought she'd left you. Yes, but I've always kept a room for her. In case she... Wants to come back? Hmm. So, that's enough of the sad stories. I still wanted to show you something. Are you still keen? That depends on what it is. My collection? Oh, yes. I want to see that, most definitely. I thought so. Then come along. Come. do I feel? They give me the creeps. Really? Then you have an astonishing feel for the soul of these pictures. These pictures, though they're so different, they have three things in common. Can you guess what they are? The artists are dead? Correct. That's one. But more important is, their owners are dead too. And third, the most important thing, each of the owners was one of my enemies. What do you say to that? Isn't that one unique collection? Strongly autobiographically assembled, handpicked according to my own quite personal standards of justice. Those are your standards? You collect pictures that have belonged to your enemies? I collect pictures from dead enemies. A small part of the souls of these people hangs here, in my house, in front of the hellfire of a volcano. That's horrible. Harsh words. Honest words. My daughter would say the very same thing. She wouldn't want her father to have so much hate inside of him. How did these people die? I know this much. They all became ill very quickly. Died in agony. And you're happy about that? I've told you what I think about my enemies. You are happy. Have you... I mean... 
Were you the... Did you? I think you've seen enough. And you're tired. It's bedtime. I'm going to retire. We can talk more in the morning. Provided you still wish to stay here. I don't know. I won't be able to shut my eyes. Oh, yes, you will. Don't be afraid. Think about what I have told you. Really think about it. And think of your own enemies. Then you'll understand me. You'll find my daughter's room by the entrance. I'll wish you a good night. Good night. Damn. Damn. Where are they both? Flemish old masters. If these are the originals here, they'll be worth a fortune. Wow. You can see right into the inside of the volcano through the glass wall. So, we weren't the only ones who were Lengi commissioned to carry out thefts. I wouldn't like to know what happened to our predecessors. locked. That's the transmitter that he opened the gate with. Okay. Let's just see what the thing can do. The map showing the sea around the island. Grim. Uh, somebody there! Uh, help! Help! Get, get us out of here! Quick! Quickly! Get us out of here, please! Help! In here! There! That's coming from the cells. Hmm. I can imagine what that control panel's for. Solid metal door. Heck, how do you get the damn thing open? Robert? Robert! Are you in there? Catherine? Yes, it's me. Catherine! You're heaven sent! How did you get here? Mrs. Hope, this is Jack Stern from the International Police. Open the door. Mr. Stern? What? I'll explain it to you once you've opened this damn door. Robert, are you both well? I've been better. Open this damn door, will you? Okay, okay. Calm yourselves down. I don't know quite how the door opens, but I'm getting there. I have to get the door open somehow. There you go. Hmm. I can imagine what that control panel's for. Oh, at last. 
Okay, where is that son of a bitch? He's sleeping. Good. Then I'm going to get him now. You'd better not do that. You're unarmed and he's dangerous. Dangerous? The guy's completely nuts. Have you seen his gallery? Yes, I have. It's gruesome. Gruesome barely describes it. Did he tell you what happened to the owners? Yes, of course. They're all dead. He had them all killed. He poisoned them. And can you guess what he used? The copies that our friend McBride had painted for you. He placed little balls of water-soluble plastic on the pictures, always just before the pictures were sent back to their owners. And inside these balls was polonium-185, an extremely unstable radioactive isotope. After 48 hours, the humidity released the isotope. It decays within minutes without leaving a trace and is absolutely deadly. That can't be true. Sorry, Catherine. It is true. They broke into my studio. They prepared the pictures just before they were going to be shipped. The idea is not a bad one. Using this method, he could reach really well-protected people. And what's more, still have the original painting as a trophy. I was right, Catherine. I told you so. Where do you know all this from? He told me himself. He wants to have me killed tomorrow. And you, Robert? What's he got in store for you? He wants to hang on to me. I'm supposed to keep working for him. He wants to keep on doing the same deals with other thieves. I can't believe that he's really done all that. You like him? He is a total psycho nutcase, a serious criminal. And you? You're not much better. You're next on account of your being an accessory. Just so we understand each other. Is that the thanks I get for getting you out of here? You also got me in here, sweetie pie. <sighs> well, great. Yes, absolutely great. And now give me your cell. I need to call Washington. No, I need it. Mike's waiting for my call. Give me the phone. No, you wait here. I've got to go up and call Mike. I've placed a mine at the petrol station in the village. We'll blow the thing up and then vanish out of here. And how are we going to do that? Are you suggesting we should swim to Tahiti, maybe? It's full of soldiers outside. There's a chopper on the roof. We'll take that. And we're going to leave that evil swine here? No way. We're going to have to if we want to get out of here alive. You're going to need some better argument than just your police badge if we're going to grab a Lengi. I'll be back in a minute. The map showing the sea around the island. Mike, where are you? You've got a nerve. We're in a boat. And there's quite a swell, I'm telling you. Mike, the battery could give up the ghost at any moment, so listen to me. Have you found McBride? Yes, I have. Later, okay? Listen, Mike, it's important. I'll guide you through the mines. I've got a map. Do exactly what I say. Okay. When you're at the beach, sneak up the path to the petrol station. It's left on the main road. Okay. There's a mine next to the left pump. You'll have to fasten your mobile to it, but carefully. One phone call ought to be enough to set it off. You want me to lose my phone? We don't have any other option. You then have to find your way to the villa. I'll open the gate when the mine explodes and the soldiers start running to the petrol station. Have you got that? Petrol station, telephone, villa. Cool. Yep. And now tell us how we get past these damn mines. Okay, now listen. If you head for the large bay, you'll see a rock to the northeast. We can see it. Good. Now sail to the left of it and then hold hard right immediately. And then the beach ought to be in reach. Land on the right of it. There's a watchtower on the left. Okay, okay. We're there! Okay. Up there is the watchtower. The petrol station must be right behind it. Can you see the soldier? We have to get him out of the way somehow. Or overcome him. Who are you fooling? I'm not Bruce Lee. There. He's going. He's off on patrol. Right, let's go then. Quick! 
There, up the stairs. Go, now go. Okay, on three. One, two. Over there on the left. That must be the pump. Come on, let's do it. Okay, good. I'm doing it. And then we're out of here. What's going on with the soldier? I can't see him. Hope this works. Right then. Now let's go. Off to the villa. Huh. The gate really is open. Come on. My God. What does this guy live like? Like a super criminal in a Bond movie. Shut up and come on. They will come. And if they don't make it? They have made it. Oh yeah? And what makes you so sure? She'll have her reasons. Mike, Bernard, thank God. Okay, good. Is the telephone in position? Of course it is. Okay, and now tell me what's going on here. What is all this? You'll find that out when we go on the record, young man. In the detention center. Uh, what? Catherine, what does this comedian want from me? We don't have any time for this nonsense. Bernard, call Mike's telephone, now. Mike, run and get the chopper ready. And then let's get out of here. Just one minute. First, we'll... Too late. Great, and now what? Now let's get out of here. Just a moment, please. You surely don't want to destroy an old man's life's work, do you? Put down the weapon, Mr. Alenghi. Mr. Stan, I don't accept instructions from dead men. You want to shoot us? All of us? I regret it greatly, but as you know, sometimes a man has to do what a man has to do. Nonsense. You don't have to do that. And you, my dear, I'm particularly sorry about you. It was most stimulating talking to you, and I like you a lot. If Mr. Odila had informed me somewhat better about you, then this matter could have turned out rather differently. Do you have anything you still want to say? Do it. Get on with it. As you like. He didn't mean you, idiot. He meant me. Well done. I know. Now let's go. Let's bag him up and take him with us. Damn, he's heavy. Come on, you guys. Come on. Onto the roof. We have to get to the helicopter. It's all starting outside. Someone could be here any minute. What's going on with the pictures? We haven't got time. Okay, let's go then. Halt! What's going on there? Quick! Quick! He's following us! Are you all okay? Sure. Let's go. that the cops 
Open up! Police! Damn it. You're right. Jack crossed this up. Open up! What are we gonna do? Mm. I'll open the door. Hi. Can I come in? <laughs> I told you. Don't trust the cops. Hey, relax. Is that how you talk to an old friend? Friend? Maybe we should sit down first. Or do we have to discuss this at the door? Sure. Well? What is this crap then? We know our rights, Jack. Save us the lecture. I quit. That's a joke, right? No joke. Unfortunately, your arrests will have to be cancelled. What? What happened? Rayla Elengi was released two days ago. Military aircraft from the diplomatic service have flown him out of the country. The destination was secret. What? He hasn't been charged. He's free. It would seem that he has influential friends. But he... I know what he did. It looks like he did some special people a favor. He left a message for you, Catherine. For me? What does it say? He would like a picture of you. For his collection. That doesn't sound good. He wants me dead. He probably wants all of you dead. Great. So what do we do now? What are the cops doing? They'll start looking for you soon. Ha, <laughs> that won't take long. They'll only have to read your report. I've deleted my report and put in for a vacation. I'm gonna rewrite everything. You won't be mentioned. We're gonna delete you from all the systems. We're gonna cover all the tracks. We? We. I'm unemployed. I need a new job. You mean... Hmm. How long have we got? Fifteen days. <laughs>